It's time for Evanston Red Devil Sports live on MyLocalRadio.com and on the radio with KNYN 99.1 FM. Evanston Red Devil Sports is brought to you by Trona Valley Federal Credit Union, Uinta County School District Number One, Bear River Dental, Rocky Mountain Yeti, Western Wyoming Community College, and Uinta Bosey's Number One. Ready. Mountain West Business Solutions, the University of Wyoming, Evanston Regional Hospital, Cache Valley Visitors Bureau, Dr. McKay Frankham, the Best Western Dunmar Inn and Legal Tender Restaurant, West Star Printing and Rocky Mountain Sign, Freeway Tire, the Come On Inn in Casper, and by Dr. Todd Hoover. And now it's time to sit back and relax as we take you to the action with the voice of the Evanston Red Devils, Elin Olive. Better late than never as we welcome you live to Wolf Stadium, home of the Green River Wolves for tonight's matchup in the 3A West. It's the only one going on here in the conference on a Thursday night and a lot up for grabs for both of these teams. This truly will be a playoff type atmosphere. We cannot get cannot wait to get ready to go. 40 minutes till kickoff. In the meantime, we got a great pregame show for you. Brought to you by Kazine's Ace and Furniture. We'll be right back after this. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football live on mylocalradio.com and KNYN. Helpful, friendly, and knowledgeable, the staff at Kazine's Ace Hardware is ready to assist with any home improvement project. Kazine's Ace Hardware, the helpful place, has expanded their store and inventory to meet your every need. Next time you're updating, painting, or maintaining your home, or you're in need of small engine repair on your lawnmower, chainsaw, or snowblower, visit Kazine's Ace Hardware at 800 Front Street in Evanston. With 25 years of successful industry experience, Mountain West Business Solutions looks forward to providing all of our customers with exceptional service, industry-leading technology, and a one-of-a-kind buying experience. Having your office equipped with the right technology makes all the difference in the world. With a lower cost per print, we will supply you with the right technology for the best price. Great people, great products, and great service. Mountain West Business Solutions. Explore Logan, Utah. We've got so much awesomeness, I don't know where to begin. Your hotel is only 10 minutes from the gorgeous National Forest for hiking and biking, bird watching, and wildflower spying. Logan is Utah's heart of the arts with more than 253 live professional performances this summer and free concerts every weekday. Catch the Garter's Market and tons of festivals and fun. Head to Logan, you won't break the bank on less than a tank. ExploreLogan.com. When you're looking for great deals on a vehicle, you'll find them at Rocky Mountain Yeti in Evanston. With two locations to serve you, let your adventure start here. Rocky Mountain Yeti in Evanston, legend driven. Get back to feeling your best with Evanston Regional Hospital Physical Therapy. If you find yourself struggling with pain or limited mobility in your everyday life, your recovery starts here. With a personalized treatment plan just for you, our experienced physical therapists will help you every step of the way to reach your goals and get back to doing what you love. Call us today to schedule an appointment. Evanston Regional Hospital, helping you get your life back. Hi, it's up the press box here at Wolves Stadium in Green River here at the uh, Les Schwab Plainside Broadcast booth. We join you for our scene set, part of our pregame show on the Kizine's Ace and Furniture pregame show. Ace is placed with the helpful hardware folks. Well, usually we dive into numbers, but 
if we've learned anything, when these two teams get together, you throw the numbers out the window. It, dating back to 2004, Evanston and Green River, six wins for Evanston, seven wins for Green River, but Evanston on a two-game streak right now, dating back to September 24, 2021. Red Devils won 27-7. And Green River last year came into Red Devil Stadium for the final game of the year on October 21st. Needing to win that game in order to punch their tickets for the playoffs, the Evanston ended their season final score that night 44-7. to So there is some revenge on the mind of the Wolves. We will go ahead and kind of dive a little bit into the numbers as this is definitely going to be one where, again, Take these with a grain of salt because you never know what is really kind of going to happen when these two teams get together. But if the numbers are to be believed, right now, Gabe Hutchinson with the longest play in the state. But overall team ratings, Evanston, the seventh best rushing offense. Green River, the ninth best rushing offense. Evanston averages 124 yards per game. Green River, 94. Team passing. Evanston, the seventh best passing offense, 150 yards per game. Green River, ninth with 68. Overall offense, Evanston number eight. Green River number 10. Evanston, 273 yards per game. Green River, 162 yards per game. On rush defense, Evanston number six in the state with 141 yards allowed. Green River, 11th with 206 yards allowed. Green River, the third best passing uh, the offense in the state, allowing 123 yards per game. Evanston down at the bottom with 214. Overall defense, Green River the number nine defense, 329. Evanston the number 11 with 355. Individual rushing stats, Evanston brings Brady Roberts, the number seven best rusher in the state. And in the passing game, Cohen Morrow sits number six. Max Hintz of Green River sits number nine. And receiving, it is none of these teams bringing in a top receiver in, in the state. However, keep your eyes for Evanston on Drew Barker and, of course, Kai Barker. That's your scene set today on our pregame show brought to you by Kazines Ace and Furniture. We'll be right back after this with a special edition of Red Devil Corner. Playoff scenarios galore in this one. And we've got the professor, David Settle of Wyo Preps. Breaking them all down for us. We'll be right back after this with Mr. Settle on the pregame show brought to you by Kazin's Ace and Furniture. You're tuned in to the First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football live on mylocalradio.com and on the radio at KNYN. Red Devil Pride runs deep with the team at Callis Automotive. Today's students are tomorrow's leaders. You'll always find quality products at fair prices at Callis Automotive. We're proud to serve our customers, our community, and our Evanston Red Devils. Stop in today. Callis Automotive, your local Napa dealer. Precision, the quality, condition, or fact of being exact and accurate. Precision is important. Scoring the next point, making the perfect shot, getting the best score. And when you think of your dentist, you want precision to be the first word that comes to mind. That's why patients are so pleased with Dr. McKay Frankham. He provides precision family dentistry at reasonable prices to every patient. Dr. McKay Frankham, call today for an appointment. Call Dr. McKay Frankham at 789-8910. Freeway Tire offers a nationwide service protection plan that covers service parts and labor on select systems, keeping your vehicle on the road. Plus, it includes coverage for towing, lockout service, flat tire changing, fuel, oil, and water delivery service, and jump starts. Knowing that your vehicle is covered at over 50,000 dealer locations nationwide provides that peace of mind wherever you are. Get the details. Visit Freeway Tire and ask about the service protection plan. Freeway Tire, 217 Bear River Drive, Evanston. Great signage is an important component to any successful business. It lets your customers know they have arrived at your doors and it's a constant advertisement of who you are. When you install LED signage, you're taking it one step further. The ability to create color messages that move is an attention grabber. Plus, you can change the message whenever you would like. Make your business stand out with an LED sign from Rocky Mountain Sign, providing service, installation, and maintenance on all signage. Rocky Mountain Sign, licensed in Wyoming and Utah. Call today for a quote, 307-789-5202.
what is UN Tabosi's number one? It's your community college to pursue your degree or certificate. It's high school equivalency. It's CPR and other workforce training. It's cooking and computer classes. It's 3D printers, vinyl cutters, and other free tools. We're many different things to many different people, meeting the education needs of the place we call home. So what is UN Tabosi's number one? That's for you to decide. Come see us today and let us help you make your educational dreams come true. Welcome to a special edition of Red Devil Corner. Today, we have a very special guest with us on the phone. We have David Settle of Wyo Preps, the professor, everything high school sports in Wyoming. This is the man to talk to. David, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Um, and we're going to talk with you about playoff scenarios for the first time in a minute. Evanston is right in the thick of uh, some playoff scenarios where they actually control their destiny. It's all about as clear as mud, but the bottom line for Evanston on Thursday Thursday night when they play Green River is win and you're in. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, they just need to take care of business against a team that's kind of struggled most of the season. I like what I've seen from the Red Devils this year, Elon. It's one of those situations where uh, I've even had a couple of coaches uh, tell me that they thought Evanston would maybe snag somebody in terms of an upset. It hasn't quite panned out uh, against the top tier uh, with uh, Star Valley, Powell, and Cody. But yeah, the Red Devils, if they can handle business on Thursday night, go out and win that football game, they will be in the playoffs. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about tiebreakers. Of course, as an Evanston fan and as Evanston fans here in Evanston, we're just rooting for a win because we don't want to even think about tiebreakers. But there there are some things to kind of consider. Uh, if Evanston does not pull off the victory against Green River. So let's dive into the first tiebreaker. So the first situation that Evanston could face is a loss to Green River and then a loss uh, by Jackson where Star Valley would win. Where would that leave us? So uh, all three of the teams uh, that would be involved in the tiebreaker would be Evanston, Jackson, and Green River. They'd all finish at one and four if Green River wins, as you said, and if Jackson loses to Star Valley. So what happens nowadays is instead of going to kind of an old-fashioned coin flip or some old, some longtime fans might remember uh, back in the day they used to play like a half of football and you'd have one team play against the other team for a half and the winner of that would play the third team for a half and then the winner would finally qualify for the playoffs. They don't do that anymore. They try, they've tried to basically build in as many tie-breaking scenarios as possible to avoid, one, a coin flip and then they don't do the, the actual game play on like a Monday or a Tuesday uh, before you would end up playing a playoff game. So what happens is you have to look at the results of each team involved in the tiebreaker against the other. And here's where some people might be confused. The bottom line, as simple as I can make it, is no matter how bad you beat an opponent or how uh, rough you get beaten by an opponent, the most you can get is 12 points in terms of positive or 12 points in a negative situation. So let's take an example. I think the final score of Evanston and Jackson, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Elon was like 47 to 12 or something like that. It was, it was, it was a blowout. So with that, Evanston already has plus 12 points. Jackson beat Green River 30 to 6. And so Jackson has a negative 12 with their loss to Evanston and a plus 12 in their win over Green River. So they're sitting at zero right now. The good news for Evanston, they're at plus 12. And so should they happen to lose the game against Green River on Thursday, if it's by 11 points or less, they're going to win the three-team tiebreaker because if you lose by 11, that drops you to plus one. You'd be a plus one. Jackson would be at zero and Green River would be at minus one in a three team differential. Evanston would win the tiebreaker. So that's about as basic and simple as I can make it. If the margin ends up being Green River winning by 12 or more, all three teams would finish at zero and you would end up going to a coin flip. And what you do is you, everybody flips a coin. You have to have a representative there. And if you've got two heads, then those two and one tails, the one tails team is the odd team out and the other two would end up reverting to the head to head matchup. So let's say wild scenario, Green River beats Evanston by 14. 
We go all three zero. You go to a coin flip. Two teams flip their heads. The odd team out is Green River. Their tails. You would revert to the head-to-head matchup between Evanston and Jackson, and Evanston would go. A big thank you to co to uh, excuse me to David Settle of Wild, perhaps breaking down the potential scenarios for the Red Devils. But for Evanston, it's simple. If Evanston is on top on the scoreboard when the clock hits zeros in the end of the fourth quarter, they will be going to the playoffs for the first time since 2018. And we got ourselves a great game ahead. Coming up next on our Cuisine's Ace and Furniture pregame show, we will have our pregame coaches show brought to you by Jake Major with the Bullock Agency of Wyoming. We'll hear from Green River coach Blaine Christensen right after this. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football live on MyLocalRadio.com and KNYN. When participating in sports, there's always a lot to talk about performing at the top of your game. I'd like to expand on that and ask, how about performing at the top of your game in every part of your life? This is Dr. Todd Hoover with Hoover Chiropractic. I offer solutions to help improve all aspects of your game called life. Pain management, migraines, allergies, emotional release, nutritional supplements based on blood tests, and improved athletic performance. To help you perform at the top of your game every day, call today to schedule an appointment in Evanston or in Kemmer, Hoover Chiropractic, 307-789. Risk takers, adventure seekers, optimists, authentic people with a fire in their belly and greatness in their hearts. You'll find them here in a place where the spirit of the cowboy lives and thrives. I am a cowboy. I am a cowboy. Soy vaquera. The world needs more cowboys. Water testing, water development, community enhancement grants, and seedling trees. Education programs and specialty workshops helping to preserve agriculture and natural resources in Uinta County. Uinta County Conservation District is here to serve you. Visit our website today at uintacountycd.com. Ready has provided safety and excellence in industrial construction support services since 1982. Our experts self-perform all phases of construction on new or existing structures such as site excavation, access road creation, concrete foundations, welding, and the installation and maintenance of piping, tanks, metal buildings, and more. Our turnkey services will have your facility operational quickly and safely. Interested in joining our team? Visit readyusa.com. We are ready. Our Community. We love it. We live it. We support it. Trona Valley is your local credit union, and we're proud to invest in relationships that go far beyond banking. We're proud to invest in the lives of our young members and their participation in sports. You're champions in our community, and we're here to support you all the way, on a court, on the field, or elsewhere. Together, let's develop lifelong, successful financial habits. You got this. We're here for you. Trona Valley, member NCUA, tronavalley.com. Welcome to the Jake Major with the Bullock Agency of Wyoming pregame coaches show. Joining me now, we have Green River Wolves head coach Blaine Christensen. And Coach Christensen, this is your first year as the head coach over at Green River. I understand you're a Green River alumni. But uh, talk to us a little bit about your journey that brought you to the head of the Wolves this year. Yeah, um, you know, my, uh, my heart has always been in Green River and Green River High School. Um, for the last four years, I was over in Rock Springs coaching um, the Rock Springs Tigers with Coach Len Hart. Um, but, you know, I always kept an eye on Green River just because I'm an alum. So after every game in Rock Springs, I'd go to Wild Preps and check the score. And uh, when this job came open this last spring, it was something that really piqued my interest. Uh, my wife teaches over here in Green River. Um, so that's kind of just how I made my way over here. But this place means means the world to me. So. Go and tell me about your team this year. Looking at the roster, there it's actually a pretty young squad with a lot of talent that you have the ability to develop. So go ahead and tell me about the 2023 Green River Wolves. Yeah, um, I think you nailed it right there. I think uh, we got a lot of young kids with a lot of potential. Uh, but we also have some seniors that um, are just now kind of finding their footing on um, the game of football and building that confidence and uh 
you know, after last week, after our game against Star Valley, I know the score says we got beat pretty good, but um, I feel like it was the best game we have played, and our kids are starting to finally play with some confidence. Um, and, you know, they were, they were excited to get back to work on Saturday when we had our team meeting, so... Coach, uh, Evanston and Green River, it's one of those matchups that you take all the numbers, you take all the stats and throw those out the window and everything kind of starts fresh because you never know what's going to happen when these two teams meet up. How are you guys preparing uh, mentally, emotionally, and physically for what could, well, not what could, what is going to be a high-intensity game with what's on the line here? Yeah, um, well, we know we know what Evanston has to offer. Uh, we know they're very well coached. Um, I actually coached Coach Moore's son in the Shrine Bowl in 2022. Um, but uh, we know they're well coached. They're physical. They got great athletes. I think of their middle linebacker and quarterback. Um, uh, I know a lot of those kids are on the track, and I know a lot of those kids are on the basketball court. So I know what type of athletes they have, and our kids know what they're up against. Um, but but they're ready for the challenge, and they know it's going to be a challenge. So um, when the ball gets kicked off on Friday, um, or on Thursday night, sorry, that's weird. But on Thursday, um, we know what's gonna what's what the stakes are and uh, what Evanston's gonna present to us. Are you expecting a playoff type atmosphere with this game, considering what is on the line? Yeah, um, I would think so, and I know the community here in Green River knows what's on the line, um, and I'm sure the community of Evanston knows on the line. And I know Evanston fans travel very well, and I know our fans. I um, like to fill the stadium here. So it's going to be a great environment. Um, I think the kids are going to play hard and physical. Um, so I, I'm excited for, I'm excited for the atmosphere on Thursday. Um, but yeah, the playoff, it, it pretty much is a playoff game. Um, so I, I think we're excited. I know Evanston's going to be ready to roll. Tell me about what you guys are expecting from the Red Devils. I mean, earlier when this question was asked, there wasn't a lot you could say, but now it seems like the everybody is starting to see that the Red Devils are a changed program and that they are trying to get that uh, that playoff spot. But what are you guys expecting from Coach Moore and Evanston? Yeah, um, first and foremost, I think they're physical. Um, I think they have a great linebacking core um, led by uh, Cohen Morrow, number two, um, it's a kid that I've had on my radar since I got the job when I started scouting teams around the state. Um, and I know they're well coached and their coaches coach with some intensity. And I've always been told you are who your coaches are. So if the coaches are intense and demand excellence, I know those kids are going to come out and demand excellence out of themselves. Uh, but you're exactly right. The program is changing. Um, the kids that I see on film when I watch Evanston, they're playing with some confidence. Um, but you know they're they're sound. They're a sound football team. They don't they don't make mistakes very often, and um, they like to capitalize on the mistakes of other teams. I've seen I can't I can't even recall how many times I've seen a ninety plus fumble return for a touchdown when I watch Evanston film right now. Uh, but you just can tell that confidence that the Evanston Red Devils have right now. Coach, you uh, you mentioned this is your first year. It's Coach Moore's first year. Evanston is a changing program, but Green River is in the midst of transition as well. Do you see a lot of similarities between these two programs right now? Um, yes, and um, kind of yes and no. Um, you know, I think when I got the job this spring, Green River came off a heartbreaking loss where if they had to win, they were in the playoffs and they lost to Evanston, right? So I think Evanston had some confidence going into the offseason and Green River, which was led by a lot of seniors last year. um, I think when they got beat, that their morale went down. Um, So right now I'm trying to develop a lot of young kids. And when I look at Evanston's roster, there's kind of a lot of old kids. But um, and that's going to work in the favor of Evanston a lot of the times. But from the from the perspective of, yes, we are trying to change the culture of things in our football programs. Yes. I will see a lot of similarities, but um, I think just with the confidence of the team and stuff, I see Evanston as a confident, confident football team right now. That is Coach Blaine Christensen, head coach for the Green River Wolves. Coach, thank you so much for the time. Uh, cannot wait for Thursday night. You, uh, it is going to be an absolutely exciting and thrilling atmosphere and hopefully a great game. Uh, anything else before we wrap this up? Nope. Uh, thanks for giving me a call, and thanks for the interview, and go Wolves. 
Big thank you to Coach Blaine Christensen of the Green River Wolves for joining us today on our Jake Major with the Bullock Agency of Wyoming pregame coach show. When we come back on the pregame show brought to you by Kazin's Ace and Furniture, we'll have Evanston coach Steve Moore. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football live on MyLocalRadio.com and KNY. In the past, when you needed a crown, it took multiple appointments and a mouthful of goop to create a mold of your teeth. Those days are gone. Bear River Dental has equipment that gets your crown done in one appointment. So this is the scanner for our same day crowns. And as you can see, we go through, we scan it, and then we're able to design exactly what your crown's gonna look like. And then we send that to the mill and it's gonna cut it out. It's gonna look just like it's shown on the screen. The same day crown machine builds your new crown for a perfect fit. Same day crowns are one one of the many services offered at Bear River Dental in Evanston. Call today to schedule an appointment. At the Best Western Dunmar Inn, Evanston, we understand that breakfast matters. That's why every room reservation includes a full complimentary breakfast. Delicious, quality food prepared and served by an amazing staff. Start your day the right way with breakfast at the Legal Tender Restaurant inside the Best Western Dunmar Inn. Quality, delicious food and excellent service every time. Because breakfast matters. The perfect mix of different ingredients can create the most delicious creation. Successful people have the ability to bring many different individuals together who work, collaborate, show kindness, use problem-solving skills, and include each individual's talents and gifts to create new inventions, compose beautiful music, and find ways to make the world a better place. At Uinta County School District Number 1, we work together every day to promote student success. Uinta County School District Number 1, Pathway to Excellence. Trust, hard work, and experience is what you'll find at Brian's Muffler Shop in Evanston. Quality work at a great price, Brian's Muffler is the perfect fit for oil changes, stock and performance mufflers, and Anderson hitches and accessories. Call Brian's Muffler today, 789-7021. With over 45 years of experience, Dr. Casey Davis at Davis Chiropractic can provide you with a whole range of services, including spinal adjustment, cold laser treatments, platform vibration therapy, and more. Davis Chiropractic is open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Here with Evanston Red Devil football head coach Steve Moore. Coach Moore, um, it all comes down to this. If Evanston's going to make the playoffs for the first time since 2018, uh, when and Evanston is in, there are some tiebreaker scenarios, but we're not even going to go into that. But uh, you look at this team and where you guys started on August 27th to where you are now. What has impressed you the most about the growth? Well, our, our kids are just taking it one week at a time. Um, you know, breaking down film and going over the mistakes and going over the things we've done well and they just really accepted the fact that uh, we're coaching them hard and and they're improving and they're they're working on their their part and we always stress do your part do your job and I think everybody's kind of taken that ownership and and worked on their technique and and their responsibilities and I think you've seen the growth from week to week which is always good to see as a coach. Star Valley, Cody, Powell the three best teams in the 3A right now, uh, not just 3A West, but the entire state. And Evanston has kept up with them uh, in all their games. It's just been li a little mistake here, a little mistake there that has cost them uh, possibly a big upset victory to kind of send a message to the state. Uh, what do you feel like is going to be the key to getting over that hump? Uh, just consistency. Yeah, like you said, we're, we're right there with them. I, told, I tell the kids we're, we're right there. We're close. Um, and I think we just need to be more consistent for four quarters. You know, we play a couple quarters good, and then we kind of let the wheels come off a little bit at times. And if we need, we just we can't let that happen and stay the course. Um, but it's consistency, that I think, is what it comes down to. You have Green River tonight, and again, it's it, it, it's a big game for Evanston. First time that Evanston has a chance to control their destiny since 2018 and get into the 3A playoffs. Um, talk to me a little bit about what you've seen from the Wolves. Yeah, I, I saw a little bit of film on them early in the year. Um, they would played some teams that we'd played, obviously, so I'd seen a little bit of film. Um, obviously looked at it closer this week, 
and they're much improved. Uh, and they got some athletes that they, they get the ball in their hands and they do some good things. So, yeah, it's going to be a battle. Always is against Green River. It uh, doesn't matter. You can throw records. You can throw stats out the window. It's going to be a battle. They're going to be up for the task. Um, you know, they still have playoff possibilities too. So they're they're playing for something also. And, and it wouldn't matter if they were or we were. It's when we line up, it's a battle with the Wolves every 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 year. I was going to say for the, the last few years, every time Green River and Evanston have met on the football field, it's exactly that. Throw the records, throw the stats, all that out the window. Everybody's going to go and battle and put on their best. There's something about uh, this Evanston matchup that seems to bring out the best in Green River. What what What's your experience with that? Yeah, I think it's just the years of, of you know, we're very similar in time, in terms of size and population and, and things of that nature. So uh, I think both programs just expect to win that game. And we are close in proximity um, and brings out the best in both programs, which is great. It should be a great battle. Coach, uh, in the past, this battle has gotten pretty emotional. Of course, we remember last year with the ejections right before halftime. What message are you sending to your boys? Because uh, the roles are kind of reversed. Green River came in here last year with a win away from the playoffs. Evanston spoiled that for them. Now Green River is hoping to do the same thing for the Red Devils. Only one playoff spot. Three teams will be competing for them. Two of the teams will be on the field tonight. Uh, what message are you sending to your boys to kind of help them control the emotions, even though this is probably going to become a high-tense kind of snippy game at some point well I, I stress all the time play with emotion because football is a, is a game that needs to be played with emotion it should be played with emotion but don't let your emotions take the best of you play whistle to whistle and don't do anything to jeopardize uh, the team we can't have yards taken away uh, with with silly penalties um, but but play with emotion but keep them in check uh, and I've stressed that to the kids and they understand that the importance of it Talk to me a little bit about the health of the team. I uh, understand we are going to be missing one uh, pretty big offensive piece tonight. But uh, outside of that, how are we looking? Uh, fairly healthy. Uh, Gabe uh, banged up his hand a little bit, so he'll be out tonight. Uh, hopefully we get him back. Um, but other than that, we're, we're pretty healthy going in. Obviously, you know, some bumps and bruises this time of year. Everybody's got a few. Um, but for the most part, pretty healthy. When you look back on this season and kind of things that you guys were hoping to accomplish, I know there was kind of a trajectory with kind of, I guess you could say, lack of a better word, checklist goals for this uh, team this season and in, in what has really been a season of kind of transforming into a different culture and a different program. Uh, what are some st things that are still left to do for the Red Devils? Well, big picture, we're, we want to be in Laramie in the middle of November. That's kind of what we've talked about. And that is obviously still... A possibility um, but take one week at a time uh, we got to get a win uh, tonight and that gets us into the dance and that's what we're talking about get in the dance and then who knows what can happen so we just we got to take care of business this week and uh, give ourselves a chance final question what's something that Green River has been showing on film that has uh, kind of caught you guys's attention you know they scramble fairly well when they the, the quarterback gets out of the pocket they scramble he scrambles uh, with the ball in his hands pretty well. So we've got to contain the quarterback, um, get pressure on him, and, and just rally and, and fly around and, and play football. That's Coach Steve Moore, head coach for Evanston Red Devil Football. Coach, thank you so much for the time. Best of luck. You know, we'll be rooting for you. We're ta uh, hopefully talking with you later on tonight after a Red Devil win. Anything else before we wrap it up? I'll just thank, thank everybody for the support, and uh, hopefully you can travel over there. If not, you can watch it on my local radio. and. Uh, go Big Red. Big thank you to Coach Steve Moore for joining us live, or excuse me, for joining us on the pre uh, Kazin's pregame show, Kazin's Ace and Furniture pregame show, as well as our Jake Major with the Bulk Agency of Wyoming pregame show. We are getting close to kickoff. We'll have our Keys of the Game right after this. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football live on MyLocalRadio.com and KNYN. Hey there, I'm Jake Major, your local Medicare and Insurance Benefits Advisor for the Bullock Agency of Wyoming. 
With over 25 years of experience protecting families in rural America, we understand the importance of having affordable insurance coverage. Whether you're searching for extra coverage or looking to understand and switch your Medicare options, I can help you find a range of top-rated insurance companies and tailor-made packages based on your needs. Call me, Jake Major, today at 307-209-4685, and let's discuss your insurance options. We're the Bullock Agency of Wyoming, when benefits matter. Quality is the one thing that you can always count on when you do business with Ellingford Brothers in Evanston. You always get high quality products and friendly, knowledgeable service at Ellingford's. Stop in today, 199 County Road, Evanston. Six minutes to go till we get going with this one. It's time for your Ellingford Brothers keys to the game. Brought to you by Ellingford Brothers. 307 79 1515 for all your cement, sand, and gravel needs. Coin toss happening. And number one key, and coach touched on it a little bit play with emotion, but don't let the emotions get the best of you. This is going to be a game where you get the feeling where a fast start, anything you can get, is going to be vital for the Evanston Red Devils tonight. So anything you can get, anything you can do, is going to help out Evanston. So that's going to be the number one key. Number two, stick with what got you here, and that is a good mix of running and passing. And then defense, go and in, uh, infiltrate the Wolves' den. That is exactly what the Red Devils are going to have to do on defense. Those are your keys to the game, brought to you by Ellingford Brothers. 307-79-1515 for your sand, cement, and gravel needs. We'll be right back with your starters and kickoff, or with your team intros and kickoff. You're tuned in to the First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football, live on MyLocalRadio.com and KNY. We're off to the rodeo. My Local Rodeo is proud to bring you live streaming coverage of high school rodeo from Utah and Wyoming, as well as the Intermountain Icebreaker of the National High School Rodeo Association's Western Legacy Series in 2023 and 2024. If you're interested in becoming a broadcast sponsor and advertising your business to the most loyal group of viewers in the country, you won't find a better opportunity. Call us today to claim your spot, 307-789-8116. That's 307-789-8116. We're off to the rodeo. Early morning. Tired muscles, pride, and grit. At Varsity Inc., we know how much work goes into building competitive teams. We work hard providing the gear you need to celebrate the teams you love. Be your athlete's biggest fan in apparel from Varsity Inc. Come in today, 926 Main Street, Evanston. Helpful, friendly, and knowledgeable, the staff at Kazin's Ace Hardware is ready to assist with any home improvement project. Kazin's Ace Hardware, the helpful place, has expanded their store and inventory to meet your every need. Next time you're updating, painting, or maintaining your home, or you're in need of small engine repair on your lawnmower, chainsaw, or snowblower, visit Kazin's Ace Hardware at 800 Front Street in Evanston. And now here are your 2023 Evanston Red Devils. Cone Morrow, senior, quarterback and linebacker. Uh, Brady Roberts, senior, running back, outside linebacker. Cole Robinette, uh, senior, linebacker and fullback. Drew Barker, senior, receiver, DB. Gabe Hutchinson, senior, running back and DB. Michael Kopp, receiver, DB, senior. Stephen Bowen, defensive line and left guard. Kenyon Muir, senior, I play offensive line and defensive line. Kai Barker, receiver, linebacker. Zane Leland, I'm a senior, I play right tackle and right defensive end. Aiden McTee, senior, fullback and nose tackle. 
Taryn Hawes, junior, left tackle, the end. Bronson Sims, junior, receiver, and DB. Breckenridge, junior, linebacker. Jordan Mendez, junior, kicker. Jaron Welling, junior, center. Jordan Welling, junior, right tackle. Clayton Cook, junior, tight end, DB. And we welcome you back to the Les Schwab Plains Tires broadcast booth as that is your team introduction presented by Varsity Inc. Varsity Inc. We're on your team. Get all your Red Devil gear at Varsity Inc. in downtown Evanston. As we get set for this one, oh, God, let's update that uh, scoreboard. Apologies about that. As Green River will kick off to the Red Devils first, going right to left on mylocalradio.com in the black uniforms, white numerals, Evanston white uniforms, red numerals as they run out to the field. Gabe Hutchinson injured tonight, so he will not be playing, hoping to have him back for the playoffs if the Red Devils do get it. Check that. It's actually Evanston kicking off, so the Red Devils will start on defense. Back to receive for Green River, it's Axel McKinnon, the five foot six senior. Jordan Mendez, the junior, to kick it off for the Red Devils. We're gonna do the best we can. I'm kind of running camera and play-by-play -play here, so stats are not going to be something that we are able to provide, and we're gonna try to do the best we can here to give you as great a broadcast as possible. That's why we're zoomed out a little bit more than Usual. So, Mendez sets it up on his own 40. He's going to kick left to right on mylocalradio.com. Mendez. The junior who has been definitely someone to kind of keep your eye on. All season. And here we go. It's a end over end kick going to be caught and out of bounds. So the pink flag will fly tonight as that is thrown out and it's an illegal procedure. And Green River will get a good start for field position for the Wolves. Led, of course, by sophomore quarterback Max Hintz, 160 pounds, 5 foot 8 for Green River. And they will start on their own 35 yard line is what it looks like. Nope, they're going to give them, looks like the 30. Now 35 on the center of the hash there. McKinnon back there with Herwalt and Gomez in the split back. Shotgun formation for the Wolves. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, hands it off to Herwalt. He'll break off the right side, but won't get very far. Maybe a gain of about one or two on the play. It'll be second down for the Wolves. They'll give him two yards. Second down and eight from the 37-yard line of the Wolves. Try to zoom this in as much as we can. There we go. It's probably going to work right there. So second down and eight, ball on the 37 of Green River, 11.22 remaining. Hints in the gun. He's got a tight formation here. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, rushes towards the left side. He's going nowhere, and Cohen Morrow brings him down. As we'll check that out on the Clean Energy Instant Replay. And Morrow. Brings him down behind the line, and it is third down and 12. A loss of four yards on the play. 10 minutes, 50 seconds remaining in this first quarter. No score, just getting started here in Green River. Red Devils win this game. They will go to the playoffs for the first time since 2018. Hints in the gun. Check that. Yep, Hints in the gun. Draws a man off sides, and they're going to get five yards back. It'll be third and seven after the penalty. So flag on the field. So we got a special halftime show coming up for you a little bit later on. The Green River 
school has invited not just the their dance team in to come and perform. It'll be a combination performance with the Green River and Evanston Classics. Hints in the gun on third down and seven. Travis back to pass. Those throws are right side. Incomplete. Great pass coverage by Bronson Sims. Would have been caught right around the first down marker, but Sims says no. Fourth and seven, and here comes the punt team. Cousins, Barker, Drew, and Kai back to receive. Punter is Jackson Gomez, five foot nine senior for the Wolves. Snap is high, had to jump to get it, gets the punt off, and it will drop right around the 40 and take a Red Devil bounce and picked up by the Wolves. About the 39 yard line is where Evanston will start their first drive. And here comes Cohen Morrow and the boys. To 10 minutes, 16 seconds remaining in this first quarter. You're here on MyLocalRadio.com and KNY. Strong eye formation. Cole Robinette, the halfback. Roberts, the deep back. Sends a man in motion from the near to far, and it's a handoff to Brady, and he will go up the middle and get a good chunk of yardage, about four yards on the play for Brady Roberts. Ten minutes and counting left in this first quarter. Still just getting started, no score. So second down and five, ball on the 44-yard line of Green River, or excuse me, of Evanston. Pardon me. Thursday night football, Wyoming style, here on MyLocalRadio.com and KNYN. Morrow under center, strong eye formation. Hands it off to Breckett Rich this time at the fullback position, and Rich will go forward, come close to the first down, and it's going to be third down and short for the Red Devils. So third and one on a gain of four yards by Brecken Rich, who will come out. Here comes Cole Robinette to take over. You see the yellow spot in the center? That is not a flag, that is on the turf. So, hopefully that doesn't confuse us tonight. Morrow under center, he's got Cole Robinette as the deep back handoff to Roberts. He'll pick up the first down, bust out towards the left side, and it's first and 10 Red Devils after a four yard gain and in into Green River territory. They spot the ball at the 48 yard line of the Wolves, ball on the far hash. Eight minutes, 52 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Evanston breaks the huddle quickly. Now Morrow goes into the gun. He's got Roberts off of his left hip. Two wide receivers split out towards the near side. Takes the shotgun snap, hand off to Roberts, and he will break off towards the right side, and Roberts across the 40, and Evanston able to come close to the first down. It'll be a gain of nine yards for Roberts. And Red Devils moving the ball in this first drive very effectively. Got Green River to go three and out on the first drive, so Evanston will get the first kickoff of the second half when it comes to that. Eight minutes, 10 seconds left in the first quarter. Evanston driving well. Second down and one, ball on the 39 of Green River. Snap tomorrow. Quarterback keeper rushes towards his left, floats it out to Kai Barker, caught across the 30, and puts a stiff arm at the 20. Big gain of about 19 yards for Morrow, or excuse me, for uh, Kai Barker. First and 10 at the Green River 20 for the Red Devils. Clock rolling at 7.46 here tonight as we are right above the band. You can probably hear that a little bit. Morrow in the gun. Takes the snap, flicks it back out to Roberts, breaks towards the right side, goes forward, still on his feet, gets to the 10 and is brought down. Big gain there for Roberts and Evanston's knocking on the door. Second down and about two, an eight yard gain to the 12. It looks like where they will spot this one. So second down and three. Ball inside the 15. Have to get to the 10-yard line. Morrow 
in the gun. Roberts off of his left hip. Hands off to Brady. He's got a hole off the right side. Cross the 10 to the 5 and brought down. It'll be first and goal, Red Devils. Just outside of the house for Evanston. First and goal from the three. And now Red Devils looking to punch this thing in and have an early lead with six minutes and 36 seconds and counting. Evanston has done a great job not only moving the ball but keeping the clock rolling. Morrow goes under center. I formation with Robinette as the fullback. Roberts as the deep back. Takes the snap, hands it off to Roberts, and he will dive through. And he is just short. So it goes straight through the middle, probably picks up about one or two yards, and it is a two-yard gain. Second down and goal from the one for the Red Devils. So the Evanston trying to get something going here. Second down, and goal. Ball on the Green River one. Strong eye formation again. Same situation. This time it's Cohen Morrow. Quarterback keeper lays over the top of the pile. And waiting for the call. He's in. Touchdown, Red Devils. The call comes from the far official. And Cohen Morrow with a one-yard dive puts the Red Devils on top with five 53, or 43 rather, left in the first. Mendez on to attempt the extra points. Kick is up, and it's good. Evanston leads early, 7-0 on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard. We'll be right back after this. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football, live on MyLocalRadio.com and KNYN. The best trips away from home always come when you know you're among friends. This is Coulter Patterson, General Manager at the Come On In Hotel and Suites in Casper, Wyoming. I invite you to stay with us every time you're here. We've got the absolute best staff. Lots of our team members have been working together for years, and we feel like we're a happy family. I guarantee you'll feel that when you come stay with us. We're always glad that you choose the Come On In, and we'll do everything to make your stay comfortable and relaxing. The Come On In Hotel and Suites is the best place to stay because we have the best staff in Casper. Come on in today. Second down and goal, and Cohen Morrow literally lays on top of the pile to get the one yard, and the Red Devils lead it seven to nothing on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard with 5:43 remaining in the first. Green River got the ball to start the game. Evanston got it back quickly on a three and out, and now Jordan Mendez to kick for the Red Devils. Mendez sends a high end over end kick. Will be caught by McKinnon around the 10 yard line. McKinnon, the senior, wrapped up at the Evans or the uh, Green River 20, and that's where they'll start their second drive of the game. The key play of that last defensive drive for the Red Devils was the hit behind the line, orchestrated by Cohen Morrow. So. He's orchestrated the key defensive play and the touchdown for the Red Devils tonight. Not bad for the senior quarterback in just about six and a half minutes worth of work. And joining me now in the Leshua Plains Tower broadcast booth, it's Luke Robinette. We'll get to him in a minute. Hint sticks, shotgun snap, hand it off to Herwalt, and he's going nowhere. Yeah, I'm not sure how much uh, the Red Devils were passing on that first drive. It looks like the Brady Roberts <laughs> run up the middle was working pretty well. So I'd like to see the run game working early. Absolutely. And it was uh, it was only one pass to Kai Barker on third down that they flicked out to, for a gain of 19. And besides that, you're absolutely right. The Red Devils moved the ball very effectively. And the clock never stopped, which I think is going to be paramount to this. We'll get your keys to the game in just a minute, Luke. Hints under center. The sophomore has Jackson Gomez, the senior, in the backfield. Takes the snap, pitches it back out to Gomez, and he's going to try to get to the sideline, and he is shoved out of bounds. Drew Barker and Kai Barker there. And 
It's a gain of about six yards on the play. That'll bring up third down and manageable for the Wolves. Got a good game there for Green River, you know, making it third manageable. But the Red Devils, you know, good opportunity here to get a three and out, you know, establish the defense early. Four minutes, 49 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Red Devils lead seven to nothing, thanks to a one-yard layover the pack by Cohen Morrow. Four minutes, 49 seconds remaining. Hints takes the snap, fix the handoff, rolls towards his right, going nowhere. Meeting them, him there first was Kai Barker, and he's going to lose yards, and it's fourth down again, and the Red Devils will get it back on a punt. Yeah, no, Green River trying to throw some misdirection there. Kai Barker did a nice job reading out on the blitz and sees the quarterback with the ball, just goes right for him and just makes the play. Kai and Drew Barker back to receive for the Red Devils, and they look to have good field position if they get any return at all here, Luke. You know, yeah, it's just good to, you know, we got some fast guys on the edge. You know, they can definitely break away, break a couple tackles and slip through and get us some good field position here for sure. Gomez, high snap. That one rolls into the end zone, and back goes the Red Devils. He's going to have to try to return this out of the end zone, and he has shoved out of bounds right around the 10, hit made by Jordan Mendez, and... A disaster play for Green River, but fortune for Evanston continues to smile on him. Yeah, Red Devils didn't really do a whole lot right there. Just a little bit of Green River, just mi miscommunication on the stat, a little high snap there. But, you know, Jordan Mendez doing a nice job of getting him on the outside, pushing him out of bounds, and now the Red Devils got great field position. Apparently it's 6 to nothing, not 7 to nothing. I guess they ruled the Mendez uh, extra point no good, although I thought they said it was good, but... Four minutes left in the first, and Evanston takes over. First and goal on the Green River 8. Evanston with a chance to really salt away something early here. Four minutes left in the second quarter. Sends a man in motion. Morrow handoff to Roberts. He's got no one to beat. Race to the corner, and Roberts puts on a stiff arm, and he is in the end zone. Touchdown, Red Devils. Brady Roberts doing a nice job breaking outside. You know, a little bit of a foot race there. Sheds one tackler and dives to the pylon for a touchdown. Great job by Brady Roberts, you know. I'm telling you, he's doing a great job running all day. There's no need to do something else if what we're doing is working. Roberts from three yards out with 3.53. Mendez to attempt the extra point. As it is, they did give them the extra point. It is 13. Kick is up. And it is good, 14-0. Red Devils, they lead early with 3.53 left in the first. You're tuned in to First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football live on mylocalradio.com and KNYN. The perfect mix of different ingredients can create the most delicious creation. Successful people have the ability to bring many different individuals together who work, collaborate, show kindness, use problem-solving skills, and include each individual's talents and gifts to create new inventions, compose beautiful music, and find ways to make the world a better place. At Uinta County School District Number 1, we work together every day to promote student success. Uinta County School District Number 1, Pathway to Excellence. nothing Red Devils early with 3.53 left in the first and Green River looking for their first first down of the night is Jordan Mendez who will kick it away for Evanston gets ready Mendez with a high end over end kick it'll be Axel McKinnon, Axel McKinnon catches it around the two yard line McKinnon looking for the far sideline gets a block but Cole Robinette now in pursuit has no one to beat now puts on the brakes, and the Red Devils get out in front of them. Good adjustment there by the kick coverage team of Evanston, but a good return by McKinnon, who puts that one about the Green River 36-37. Yeah, McKinnon doing a nice job reversing field there. You know, didn't really think he was going to get much out of that kick. Looks like a lot of Red Devils were swarming at the ball, but he cuts back, and he had no one there for a second. Three minutes, 41 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Evanston. Already with a three-yard touchdown run by Brady Roberts and a one-yard dive by Cohen Morrow, making it 14-0. Evanston on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard. Hints, the sophomore quarterback, goes under center, has one man in the backfield. It's Gomez. Pitches it out to Gomez around the left side, and he's wrapped up, brought down. Kai Barker says, no way. 
Kai Barker doing a nice job getting to the outsides, you know, reading the run plays pretty well. That's two really big tackles from him. Second down and 10, or nine rather, from the 39-yard line of Green River. Three minutes, six, uh, 17 seconds remaining in this first quarter. As hints, you know, this Green River team, really young, a lot of sophomores, a lot of juniors, a lot of things for Coach Blaine Christensen to build off of, and Evanston gets drawn off sides. Pink flag comes out, and that's going to give him five yards. It'll be second down and four for the Wolves. Red Devils try to get a blitz off there. You know, just kind of overread it a little bit, got a little antsy. But, you know, I like the call going for the blitzes because they've been landing a little bit in the last couple weeks. So, you know, just got Breckenridge and Cohen going up the middle. Not a bad play call. Just got to execute just a little better. So second down and four from the 34-yard line of Green River. Takes the shotgun snap, fix the handoff, gets it over to Herwalt, and he will go into the pile, and the Red Devils put on the brakes. Herwalt gets about two yards on the play and will be third and short. Red Devils doing a nice job playing to the whistle there. Green River kind of running, you know, a little bit of what Star Valley does, a little misdirection. You know, it's hard to tell where the ball goes sometimes like that, but they did a nice job on a team tackle there and, you know, pushing until the whistle blew. You know how much this Thursday night football game is kind of taking me out of it a little bit? I just tried to look on Wild Preps to see if we have results from the cross-country championship meet. That doesn't take place till Friday. Yep. <laughs> Thinking yep. it was Friday. <laughs> yeah, it's weird being the, the guys that are kicking everything off for the week. Yeah, but it's, again, I said it once, I'll say it again, Thursday night football, Cowboy State style. Two minutes and eight seconds left in the first. Red Devils up 14-0. Hints for Green River under center. Hands it off to Gomez, and the Red Devils stand him up and drive him back. A wall of white and red denies Gomez, and it'll be fourth and short. Red Devils decided to send all the dogs up the middle there, and it, it kind of it paid out, you know, the... The backers doing a nice job getting behind the line of scrimmage and making another play in the D-line, too. They lost a yard on the play, and it's fourth and two. They had Drew Barker back to receive the punt, but it looks like Green River is going to go for it. And indeed they are. Hints in the shotgun formation. Two wide receivers on each end, and Gomez off to his left hip. Takes the shotgun snap. Rolling towards the left. Throws for the first down. That is... Dropped by McKinnon. He makes the catch around first down, but can't control it to the ground. Turnover on downs to the Red Devils. Great play by uh, Kai Barker yet again on defense, you know, this time in the pass coverage. You know, he originally caught the ball, but Kai stayed with it and made sure to get his hands in there too, get a little involved, and you know, that, that forced McKinnon to drop it. And, you know, so huge play there on the fourth and short by Kai Barker. First down and 10 from the Green or Evanston 40. Actually, no, they're in Green River territory. 46-yard line of Green River. Morrow in the guns got Roberts off his right hip. We'll see if they go anywhere else besides Roberts. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it as Roberts gets a hand up, but hand off, but he's wrapped up and brought down. Big hit there for Fran Valenzuela, the six foot four, 230-pound senior. Loss of three on the play. Green River doing a nice job getting behind our line of scrimmage and, you know, making a big play on the ball. But if you're the Evanston Red Devils, you're, you're unfazed by that one. Brady Roberts and the O-line have been doing a good job all day. You know, they've tacked on 14 points already, and we're, I believe we're still in the first. So, yep. you know, just, you know, a good play by Green River, but don't let it scare you too much. And the key that Evanston has really kind of used here is the clock has hardly stopped when they've been on offense. They have been just letting that clock roll as we are under 35 seconds remaining in this First quarter, Morrow pitches it back to Roberts. Gets a block from Kai Barker, but then Herwalt wraps him up and brings him down for a loss of one. It'll be third and long, and Green River's defense showing something. Green River contained on the outside. You know, the man did a good job there, still on the outside from Brady Roberts. You know, Brady Roberts tried to cut back upfield, but, you know, not a lot of uh, room to work with. But, you know, Evanston maybe need to switch it up a little bit, get back to the pass a little bit, and then, and find another run a little bit later on. And that looks like it'll be the final play of the first quarter. It's 14-0 Evanston on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard. We'll be right back after this on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football live on MyLocalRadio.com and KNY. 
Get back to feeling your best with Evanston Regional Hospital Physical Therapy. If you find yourself struggling with pain or limited mobility in your everyday life, your recovery starts here. With a personalized treatment plan just for you, our experienced physical therapists will help you every step of the way to reach your goals and get back to doing what you love. Call us today to schedule an appointment. Evanston Regional Hospital, helping you get your life back. Ready is committed to providing superior services to our customers by requiring individual accountability for excellence in quality, safety, and dependability. We are a growing company that is currently hiring across Wyoming, Colorado, Texas, Nevada, Idaho, and elsewhere. Our valued team members receive competitive wages, full benefits, and weekly pay. Interested in joining our team? Visit ReadyUSA.com. We are ready. The very best place to stay when you visit Evanston, Wyoming is the Best Western Dunmar Inn. This amazing hotel is located on 10 beautiful acres. We will play that ad a little bit later on, but we are underway early here in the second quarter. 14 to nothing, third down and 13 on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard. Red Devils leading. Morrow in the gun, three wide receivers split wide right, takes the snap. Dropping back to snap to pass, has plenty of time, fires a bullet, and that is incomplete. Almost to Drew Barker, would have been caught around the 35-yard uh, line of Green River, and it drops down, and it's fourth down and 13, and Evanston will have to punt it for the first time. Oh, go ahead. Evanston having two good drives earlier. No, the third one didn't really work out so far, you know, fourth and long, but... You know, definitely just don't don't let it phase you again. Like I said earlier, just, you know, if you have two good drives to build on, the run game wasn't there this time, but hopefully we'll maybe get a little creative uh, next possession and, you know, switch things up and get, get back to scoring the ball. Fourth and 13 as Kai Barker will stand around his own 40-yard line. As the snap is right at him and sends a high kick, almost blocked, but that'll go out of bounds right around the 25-yard line, and that's where Green River will start this drive. So here comes Max Hintz and company. Have to go 75 yards in order to try to draw level here. Red Devils on defense tonight doing a good job not letting Green River see success with just about anything, the run, the run or pass, just looking to kind of keep doing what we've been doing and make sure that our presence is felt here on defense. Ball on the far hash, first and 10 from the 29-yard line of Green River. Hints in the gun, two wide receivers split towards the near side, two to the far. Has Gomez back there with him off the left hip. Check that, that's Herwalt. Takes a snap, dropping back to pass, throws it to a jump pass to Herwalt, and he's wrapped up right around the line of scrimmage. They give him one yard on the play, and the Red Devils swarm to the football. Great coverage by the Red Devil defense, specifically getting there was Grady Ivy. Yeah, Grady Ivy and Cohen Morrow doing a nice job realizing it was a screen. Breckenridge putting a little pressure on the quarterback, but Cohen and Grady did a nice job reading it and not, not going too crazy and just going back to the running back. Luke, it almost looked like a busted play where he was just looking for somewhere to go. We had Brecken Rich breathing down his neck. Yeah, Brecken hit the gap really hard and, you know, really just was, yeah, exactly, breathing down his neck. So good blitz by the Red Devils there. Hints in the gun, got Gomez in the I formation in the backfield. Takes the snap and it's a play action. Rolls towards his right, throws, and that is caught around the 30 yard line. Big reception for Green Rivers, Aiden Ruiz. Trying to get a little misdirection, play action pass there, but Cohen Morrow again, just doing a nice job in pass coverage. You know, caught the ball, but I'm telling you, nothing gets past Cohen Morrow. He's a wrap up tackler and, you know, he doesn't always need the team to come to, come to him. He, he'll get the solo tackle just all by himself. Gain of two yards on the play, third down and eight on the 32 yard line of Green River. Wolves still looking for that first, first down if my memory serves me correctly. Hints in the gun, trips to the far end of the formation. Evanston looking like they're bringing some pressure. Hints steps up, he's gonna go forward and picks up the first down, still on his feet at the 45, wrapped up and brought down, and there's a flag. Cohen Morrow makes the contact, but there's a flag thrown right there as it'll be first and 10 Wolves, and they're probably gonna get a little bit more tacked onto this one. 
you know, Brady Roberts had a clean blitz off the right side, but the quarterback did a nice job reading that and just going up right up the middle. Face mask on Evanston. That'll push the ball even more forward for Green River into Evanston territory. About the 40-yard line of Evanston. Wolves down 14-0, 10-08 remaining in the first half. Clock's still rolling, though. I invite you to stick around for our halftime show, brought to you by Uinta Eye and Vision, where our vision is to improve yours. Gomez in the backfield with the Wolves. Fake pitch out by Hintz. He keeps it, and the Red Devils wrap him up. Gang tackle. Cohen Morrow, Cole Robinette, as he gains about three yards on the play. Yeah, Green River going back to that misdirection kind of stuff. You know, it made it hard for me to track. I didn't know where the ball was for a second. But, you know, Red Devils doing a nice job. You know, good game for them, but good wrap-up tackle. Nine and a half left in the first. It's going to be a special halftime show. Usually when we're at road games, we don't show the halftime show as much. But we will stick with the shrunk ad uh, format that we usually do so you can watch them on the screen. Because the Green River dance team will do a combined routine with our very own Evanston Classics. Strong eye formation for the Wolves. Second down and seven. Ball in the 37. Pitches it back out to Gomez in the backfield. Tries to turn the corner, and Cohen Morrow tried for the tackle, but he slips through. And coming up for the first down and picking up the seven yards needed, it's Jackson Gomez, and they'll move the chains for the Wolves. Green River doing a nice job. This is the most success they've seen all game, and, you know, they're just going to their guys and you know, finding open space, doing a nice job moving the football. Clock stops at 8 minutes and four, 58 seconds. We got a penalty, and Green River's moving back. Shot block on Green River. So that's going to push him back even more. Second down and a ways to go. It's going to push him past the sticks. And we're looking at a second down and about 20, it looks like. Pushes them back to the 49-yard line, their own 49-yard line. They got to get out to the Evanston 30 to pick up a first down. Second down and 21. Costly penalty for Green River. Hints in the gun. Gomez off his, his left hip, two wide receivers on each end. Takes the snap. Hints, here comes the pressure, throws it away. Caught by McKinnon at the 50. Has room to work with into Evanston territory at the 40. Wrapped up and brought down by Kai Barker. So a gain of about 10 yards, 11 yards on the play. Now that'll bring up third down and nine. They spot it at the Evanston 40. They got to get it out to the 31 of the Red Devils right now. Third and nine. Hints. In the gun. Tries to get Evanston to jump, and he does, and it's going to shorten up that third down a little bit more. Green River's done a nice job of taking uh, advantage of Evanston being a little uh, undisciplined here on the, on the line. You know, a little jumpy there, just trying to send some guys in there to get some pressure, but, you know, Green River doing a nice job. Still will be third and five, and that'll still be a, a good ways to go, so Evanston's got to keep their head up and just get the stop. Clock continues to roll at 8 minutes and 17 seconds remaining in the half. Strong eye formation for, excuse me, just a regular eye formation it looks like for the Wolves. Gomez in the backfield. He's shown some speed tonight. Takes the snap. Fakes the handoff to Gomez. Rolls towards the left, looking to pass. Throws, and that is intercepted by Brady Roberts at the 20. Roberts picks up some blockers on the far sideline and gets to the 35. Still smites his way into Green Rivers. Close to the 45 instead. He'll still be inside the 50, but a great interception and great fight by Brady Roberts as we look at it on the Clean Energy Instant Replay. And Roberts turns the ball back to the Red Devils as we just missed the Instant Replay. Apologies about that. Seven minutes, 47 seconds. Evanston leads 14-0. And we'll get the ball just outside of Green River territory on their own 47 on the far hash. Strong eye formation for the Red Devils. Looks like Roberts, the deep back. And Robinette, the fullback, takes the snap. 
Hands it off to Roberts. Breaks off the right side. Picks up a block across the 35 and picks up the first down. About an 11-yard gain for Brady Roberts. Run didn't do too well last drive, but just like I said, you know, just keep going to it. Brady Roberts will do a nice job. He, he's always going to hit the hole hard, and the line did a great job blocking there. He had tons of time to decide where he wanted to go and find the best route to, to get down the field. So good job to the line there. First and 10 on the 42 of the Wolves. Morrow under center, another strong eye formation. Cole Robinette in at the fullback position. Takes the snap, hands it off. Check that, that's Brecken Rich actually. And Rich will get to the 35. Little switch up there going there to the fullback Brecken Rich. He did a nice job hitting that hole hard too. You know, you and I got a chance to watch Brecken a little bit in the JV game last night, and he was having some great runs. No surprise to see him get some varsity time for the junior. Yeah, no, I think that's going to be our Brady Roberts next season. You know, he's, he did a nice job in the JV game, and he's done a nice job at both offense and defense when he get, does get in on varsity here. But, you know, he's just he's a super physical player and love watching him play. And in a uh, 2023 American Legion West All-Star as well. Actually got to pitch in the game. Second down and three. Hand off to Roberts. Break off the right side. He's got the first down to the 30. Still puts on a stiff arm. Still loose at the 20. And still on his feet. Huge gain by Brady Roberts. And right now, these look like, Luke, it looks like these are kind of body blows to just kind of wear out the line a little bit. Yeah, no, exactly. We're just kind of just running it right up through Green River and just kind of doing what we want. Brady Roberts doing a nice job. Just, you know, one tackler comes up, it almost means nothing. He kind of just bounces off people like Derrick Henry, get break into the outside. Evanston doing a nice job again, like you said earlier, chunking away that time too. The clock hasn't stopped much all game. First and 10, ball on the 17 of the Wolves. On the far hash, strong eye formation. It's Rich as the fullback. Roberts at the halfback position, and they'll pitch it out. Actually, this is going to be not a pitch out to Roberts. This is Jesse Page. And he'll get a good get chunk of yardage, about five on the play. You know, Jesse Page, just another hard runner, just like Brecken Rich, a younger guy, and he'll be here next year. You know, if you're an Evanston <laughs> Red Devils fan, you, you love to see that because, you know, you got a lot of good guys coming up. Flag on the play, holding on Evanston. I was about to ask, we're seeing kind of a first look at the future of the Evanston run game, and you got to like what you're seeing there. Yeah, no, we've had a lot of seniors for quite a long time. You know, we had a little bit of a young squad the last two years, but – and these guys are going to leave, but um, the, the people who are filling the shoes next year, they'll do a good job, and they definitely got some talent coming their way. Holding on the Red Devils, pushes them back to the 27-yard line, and it's first and 20. Have to get inside the 10 to the 7 in order to pick it up. Strong eye formation. Robinette in the full back, and it looks like Rich or Page. Can't tell who that is. It is Rich. Morrow dropping back pass, throwing for Drew Barker. That is caught in the... Did he get in or is he out? Touchdown, Red Devils. What a catch by Drew Barker from 27 yards out. Check it out on the Clean Energy Instant Replay. Luke Robinette. Uh, Cohen Morrow doing a nice job moving right and keeping his eyes downfield. Drew Barker doing a nice job getting behind the, the DB there, get, going up and getting the ball, getting across the plane and doing a nice job scoring the ball. Yet again, that time we did it through the air. That was the first one all game. So it's good to see the Red Devils mixing it up a little bit. 20 to nothing on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard. Kick up by Mendez is good. 21, Evanston, Green River nothing. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football live on MyLocalRadio.com and KNYN. Ready is committed to providing superior services to our customers by requiring individual accountability for excellence in quality, safety, and dependability. We are a growing company that is currently hiring across Wyoming, Colorado, Texas, Nevada, Idaho, and elsewhere. Our valued team members receive competitive wages, full benefits, and weekly pay. Interested in joining our team? Visit ReadyUSA.com. We are ready. The very best place to stay when you visit Evanston, Wyoming is the Best Western Dunmar Inn. This amazing hotel is located on 10 beautiful acres and offers clean, comfortable rooms with amazing beds, a fitness center, an outdoor pool open in the summer, and a wonderful on-site restaurant that provides a complimentary breakfast with every stay, all at an affordable rate. Whenever your travels bring you to Evanston, Wyoming, make all your room reservations at the Best Western Dunmar Inn, 1601 Harrison Drive.
back at the Les Schwab Plains Tower broadcast booth, Elon Olive and my broadcast partner, Luke Robinette. And uh, Luke, the, the situation for Evanston coming into this game, win and you were in the playoffs for the first time since 2018. You know, and the Red Devils have shown they want it. They've done a nice job, you know, starting off early on offense, you know, getting a, a turnover by Brad Roberts on defense. Just, you know, they've really proven that they want to be in the playoffs here soon. Mendez with a high end over end kick. McKinnon will make the catch about the five-yard line on the far side of the field. Now tries to go towards the near. Now nowhere to go to the far. Now finds the sideline out to the 30, and that's where Green River starts this one. Axel McKinnon has had some really shifty, really athletic kick returns for the Wolves here tonight. You know, he stays patient really well. He waits behind his blockers, and he finds the best gap to take, you know. He's, he hasn't, like, broke away, but he, he gets nice chunk plays to try to put the Green, Rivers in, Green River in the best chance that they can get for field position. First and 10 on the 29-yard line of Green River as sophomore quarterback Max Hintz, 5'8", uh, 160 pounds, comes out for the Wolves. And Hintz, I mean, if you're, you're a sophomore quarterback, You've got some talent and you've got some time to really develop into something special. Yeah, no, and I think it's good for Evanston to see, you know, these, these young sophomores too because these are the guys that people like Jesse Page, Breckenridge, Jordan Mendez, they'll be playing next year. Hints in the gun, sends a man in motion. It is Christian Lee, and he goes for the quick pass out to McKinnon for the screen and gets to the 30, wrapped up and brought down Cohen Morrow. Check that, that's Bronson Sims who flies to the ball, spins him around, and it's a gain of about three on the play, second and seven. Darren Hall is almost making a play on the quarterback there. Went for the ball. Missed it just barely, but Bronson Sims doing a nice job on the wrap-up tackle. They got a pretty good gain there on the first down, but, you know, just the defense has been solid all night, so just keep trusting it, keep believing in it, and we'll get the stops that we need. Second down and six. Ball at the 33-yard line. Hints in the gun. Trips to the far side of the formation. Drops back to pass. Here comes the pressure. Cohen Morrow wraps him up and brings him down. Loss of four on the play. Cohen Morrow with the quarterback snack, sack. Yeah, Snacking on the quarterback sack, I guess you could say. Exactly. Cole Robinette doing a nice job going on the outside, taking the blocker, and Cohen Morrow just you know, pursues the quarterback, does a nice job getting both hands on him, bringing him down. Uh, you know, now it's third and ten, so good job to the defense getting behind the line of scrimmage and keep making plays. We've done that a, a couple times now. 4.09 and counting left in the half. Red Devils dominating here early. 21 to nothing on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard. Quarterback uh, Quo Morrow has been involved in two of them, a one-yard touchdown dive and a 27-yard pass to Drew Barker. Hints on third down and long, looking pass, throws. That is incomplete. Down at the 50-yard line, nobody in the area code, and it'll be fourth and long. I think Evanston, Evanston has done a really nice job of kind of shaking the quarterback up. You know, he, he's got hit a couple times in, in the backfield, and now he's, he's a little, little shaky back there and did a nice job. You know, that's what you want to do on defense. You want to make sure that your presence is felt, you know, hitting them hard and just playing physical. And you can see that start to translate, especially when they start to pass like that. Fourth and 10 from the 29, and Evanston – is going to see, they looked like they had Bark, the Barkers ready to return, but Green River looks like they are going to go for it. Tight formation, empty backfield. Hints takes the snap, and he's going to go ahead and just pooch kick that one off. Try to catch the Red Devils napping, and that'll roll out of bounds right around the Red Devil 42-yard line. Creative play by Green River there, you know, we kind of didn't know what was going on, but didn't hurt us one bit, you know, still got really good field position. And Red Devil is going to come back and try to make it, you know, 28 to 0, you know, just got to keep the foot on the gas, you know. Uh, the half's not even over yet, and you never really know, so just got to continue to do what you know, continue to do what works, and just keep tacking points on the board. Wolf Stadium, Green River, Wyoming is where we find ourselves tonight, and the Evanston Red Devils leading the Green River Wolves 21-0 with 3.40 left in the half. Morrow and the Red Devils in the strong eye formation. Robinette the fullback and Roberts the deep back. Brady Roberts has had himself a game. Hand off to Roberts. Tries to go off the right tackle. Makes a spin move and Roberts just moves the legs and keeps fighting a gain of eight on the play for Brady Roberts. Doing a nice job playing through the whistle yet again. Brady Roberts, old reliable for sure. 
He's done that the last two years. I remember last year talking with Coach Jim Burton at the time about Brady Roberts. He says he's one of those quiet guys who just constantly gets four or five yards per carry. Didn't get the name recognition that some other guys got around the state. Well, this year, I think everybody's paying attention to Brady Roberts. Second down and one. Ball on the Green River 49. Another strong eye formation. Morrow under center takes the snap. Hands it off to, this time it's Page, and he'll pick up the first down. And Jesse Page still fighting for yards, and they're going to knock him down at progression right around the 44-yard line of Green River. Evanston doing the run game with a lot of different backs, a lot of different looks, kind of maybe throwing Green River off a little bit. I guess, you know, it might be weird for other teams seeing Brady Roberts go off the field. They're like, oh, definitely going for a pass there, but, you know, we do a nice job keeping them on their toes, and we got a lot of guys who can run the ball, it looks like. Jesse Page having himself a great breakout game. So is Brecken Rich as well. Shotgun formation for the Red Devils. Bronson Sims runs onto the field into the slot on the far side. Morrow takes a snap. Flag on the play, and they're going to stop this one. We'll see what the call is. False start on Evanston. Red Devils. If there's one thing that's not going to plan for them, it is the penalties here tonight. Yeah, getting a, getting a little bit of penalties. You know, that, that's what happens when you're excited and you, and you know you can go out there and put some more points on the board and you know you can go, you know, make those plays on defense. But and it looks like Evanston's going to hustle back up and run a, good, run a play here. First and 15 from the their own 49. Morrow takes the snap. Jock back to pass, throws wide open. Drew Barker caught at the 40, keeps the legs moving and is dragged back down. But a great reception by the senior, Drew Barker. Drew Barker doing a nice job breaking open on the route. Coming tomorrow, keeping the eyes open, finding him. And, you know, Drew Barker's not a super big guy, but he, he keeps running hard too. Gain of about 12 yards on the play, second down and three. Morrow, quick pass, throws, caught by, looks like Mendez this time. Nope, that's Drew Barker again, and Barker just outside the 20. Conan Drew have been finding a, a good connection recently the last couple games. Like Powell Drew had over 100 yards, and, you know, it looks like he's just going right back to him. And then... It looks like we got a timeout. We'll take it as well. Red Devils lead 21-0. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football, live on MyLocalRadio.com and KNY. With 25 years of successful industry experience, Mountain West Business Solutions looks forward to providing all of our customers with exceptional service, industry-leading technology, and a one-of-a-kind buying experience. Having your office equipped with the right technology makes all the difference in the world. With a lower cost per print, we will supply you with the right technology for the best price. Great people, great products, and great service. Mountain West Business Solutions. During the break, myself and Luke Robinette talking about what advantage this does present Evanston, the fact that you've got Jesse Page going so strong right now. And you made a good point during the break about, about kind of resting some guys potentially for the future. Yeah, no, it gives the it gives the young guys a good look, you know, to see what a varsity game is like and see what that speed's like. But it also does a, a good job for Brady, you know, to you rest him up. He's had a long season, you know, running back's a very beat-up position. So every every break that he gets is definitely good for him, keeping him healthy for the playoffs. Shock information. Roberts in the backfield with Morrow. Takes the snap. Immediately looking towards the left side. Morrow has some time. Now he's flushed out. Has to scramble. Back towards the 40. Looking downfield. Throws it away. And good pass coverage by the Wolves. Second down and 10 from the 22 of Green River. I think that's one of the biggest things Cohen's got really good at this year. You know, he, he evades the pressure in the backfield really well. And he does a really good job of just kind of knowing when, you know, there's nothing downfield. And he just throws it away. It's not the prettiest play in football, but it's definitely um, reassuring, I guess, as a coach for to see your quarterback go out there and make the right decisions. You know, not every play is going to be this, this big, you know, scramble play for a 40-yard gain. But he does a nice job just taking the simple play and just taking the, the no gain there. 66 seconds left in this first half. Red Devils on top, 21 to nothing. Two touchdowns in the first, one so far in the second. But Evanson knocking. Second down and 10 on the Green River 22. Trips on the near side. Shotgun snap. Morrow throws Drew Barker again. Caught around the 15. And they're going to give him about the 19 yard line. And it'll be third down and about four. Or third down and six. And we got a timeout taken by Evanston, looks like. We'll take it as well. 
Red Devils, 48 seconds left in the half. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football, live on MyLocalRadio.com and KNY. When you have an appointment with the dentist, it's reassuring to know that you're going to be seen by experienced, well-trained professionals. At Bear River Dental in Evanston, Dr. Lester, Dr. Owens, and Dr. Welch check every box. Plus, they're really nice people. Their passion to provide excellent dental care is reflected in everything from state-of-the-art equipment to professional, hard-working staff. Choose the professionals at Bear River Dental, serving patients of all ages. Call today to schedule an appointment. Elon Olive and Luke Robinette joining you live from the Les Schwab Plains Tires broadcast booth. Evanston leads on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard 21 to nothing. Third and six ball on the Green River 18 for the Red Devils with 48 seconds left in the third, uh, in the uh, second quarter rather. And Luke, this is uh, when it's really, really great to have uh, a Jordan Mendez ready to go for Evanston as they are looking to stretch that lead once again. Yeah, no, old reliable Jordan Mendez. He does a great job. He he hasn't missed a kick yet. He's had a couple blocked, but he, he he doesn't miss. You know, when he's given the opportunity to go go for the uprights, he puts it right in between them. So it's definitely a nice piece. I think that's one of the better pickups we had in the offseason. And, you know, he's done a good job just, you know, being wherever he can, wide out, um, DB, and also just a, a phenomenal kicker for us. Morrow in the gun. He's got, looks like Roberts back there with him. Tight formation on third down and six. And a whistle. Timeout taken by Green River. We'll take it as well. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football, live on MyLocalRadio.com and KNY. Out here, we've always worked remote. Out here, stress usually refers to the pull on a rope. Where a stroll in the city is also a stroll in the great outdoors. Where work is a way of life. And life is good. Out here, the backyards are big, and the deals, they're even bigger. This is southwestern Wyoming, and it's where you can get the biggest deals on a vehicle you want with plenty of hometown hospitality. Heritage Auto, your hometown dealer with the biggest deals. Going out of the timeout, Evanston with a one-yard touchdown dive by Cohen Morrow. Brady Roberts from three yards out, and then a 27-yard touchdown reception by Drew Barker. He made the catch right around the one or two and immediately turned his momentum to where he fell into the end zone. You yeah, know, it was definitely a good play. We've spread it out a lot, and you love to see that if you're an Evanston Red Devil fan. You know, last uh, regular season game, you want to see all, all the guys have some success, and we've been seeing that so far. Drew Barker. Not on the field right now, but you do have Jordan Mendez on the near side. Shotgun formation for the Red Devils. Morrow has Roberts back there with him. Third and six. Morrow looking to throw. Fires and caught by the Red Devils for the first down. Give it up for Kai Barker. And Evanson moves the chains inside the 10. First and goal. And Morrow stops the clock, spikes it with 30 32 seconds. The clock is still rolling. It should have stopped probably around the 35 mark, but they stopped it around 31. Please reset the game clock to 35 seconds. Good call on the 35 seconds. <laughs> so they'll reset it to 35, and Morrow spikes the ball, and Evanston has two timeouts left. And you really have a chance to kind of work something up here. You want the touchdown here because – you make this about a 30-point game. Plus, by the way, Green River took the opening kick and we're three and out. Evanston with a chance to double up here and really put their uh, foots down here tonight. 35 seconds left. First and goal. For, uh, or second and goal from the eight, rather, after the spike ball. Morrow takes the snap. Looking towards his left and trying to take time. Throws, and that is intended for Kai Barker. And he skied that one over the big frame of Kai. Red Devils doing a nice job there. Cone Morrow, you know, not finding anything on the play. It didn't open up, but you still got, you know, you got two downs, or you got this down left, and then you got Jordan Mendez. You don't want to take the field goal out of play. You definitely want to look for the end zone, but don't do anything that would take the three points away. 28 seconds remaining in this 
second half or second quarter. I invite you to stick around for our halftime show brought to you by You Into I Envision, where our vision is to improve yours. We'll shrink up the ads so you can watch a special dance number. We don't can't play the music because of copyright rules, but the Green River Dance team has invited the Evanston Classics to perform with them here tonight. Morrow in the gun, two on each end. Takes the shotgun snap. Morrow drops back. Here comes pressure. McKinnon, and it is her wall to sacks him. 20 seconds and counting, and that will put the Red Devils close to the 30-yard line. 14 seconds, 13 seconds, as Herwalt with the biggest defensive play of the night for Green River. Five seconds left, four seconds left, and there's the timeout. Three seconds left. We're going to get a Jordan Mendez field goal right at the whistle here. It's going to be one of the longer ones I've seen all season, but Jordan's got a leg, so... He definitely's got a chance to go get this one. That'll put the Red Devils at the 22, so it'll be a 30, 37, no. Give me one second. 49 yard field goal attempt for Mendez. That'll put them Actually, at the 22, so a 39-yard field goal attempt. Apologies. For Mendez. So he's going to have to put what he's got into this one. Big opportunity for Mendez. Put the Red Devils up by 24 if he hits this one. Rich, the holder for Evanston. Three seconds left on the clock as... Green River has one timeout left. We'll see if they take it to make Mendez think about this. As he lines back, and they're not. And now they take it, it looks like. So they will take it. So Green River takes their final timeout. Two seconds remaining in the half. Green River trying to ice the kicker here, but. I don't think Jordan Mendez will be phased by it. That's that's just not something he's about. He's all about, you know, he's got all the confidence in the world. And I, I think he'll knock it through. It's a 39-yard field goal attempt for Mendez. Special teams coach, Jason Mitchell. This kind of does feel like a playoff game a little bit. You've got the cheerleaders from Evanston here. You've got the dance team. You've got the great student section. This feels like a neutral site game here in Green River. Yes, we do. We did a good job getting the people out here to come support our Red Devils. Fourth down and 22 from the 22. 39-yard attempt for Mendez. Rich, the holder. Ball in between the hash marks. Just got to boot this thing on the nose. Kick is up, and it is. Looked like he goes wide right. Might have been blocked, and that's going to be the end of the half. It's 21 for Evanston, nothing for Green River. You're tuned in to First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football, live on MyLocalRadio.com and KNYN. Dad, did you know that the iris of your eye is more unique than your fingerprint? Yes, I did. I learned that in optometry school. I'm Dr. Trent Clooney with Uinta Eye and Vision, where we understand that every eye is unique. We are dedicated to carrying on the tradition of great vision care in Evanston. Quality care like I received growing up here. I care about your individual and unique eye health. With over a decade of experience, I'm excited to have returned to Evanston and once again cheer on the Evanston Red Devils. Call my dad at Uinta Eye and Vision to schedule an appointment. 307-789-3937. Risk takers, adventure seekers, optimists, authentic people with a fire in their belly and greatness in their hearts. You'll find them here in a place where the spirit of the cowboy lives and thrives. I am a cowboy. I am a cowboy. Soy vaquera. The world needs more cowboys. 
get a degree or certification, earn your high school GED, get job skills, become CPR certified, or use our free 3D printers and tools. These are just a few of the opportunities available at Uinta BOCES number one. Call 307-789-5742 to learn more. Evanston Classics on the right, the Green River dance team on the left, and we'd love to play it more in its entirety because of copyright restrictions. We are not able to play the music, but we can at least let you kind of watch. And you can kind of hear the music a little bit in the background. Uh, Elon Olive and Luke Robinette, time for our first half highlights. As the score right now, it is Evanston, 21 Green River, nothing. Cohen Morrow, a one-yard touchdown dive. When I mean one-yard dive, he literally laid over the top of the line, stretched the ball to get that touchdown. 7 nothing Evanston with 5.43 left in the first. Brady Roberts then, after a bad snap on a punt by Green River, they had the punter took it out of the end zone and then tried to run it away. Gets stopped inside his own 10. Evanston brings it to the three. Roberts takes off towards the left side and wins the race to the far pylon and makes it 14-0 with 353 left in the first. And then Drew Barker with a 27-yard reception from uh, Cohen Morrow. 520 left in the half, makes it 21-0. And right before the half, Jordan Mendez kind of misses a 39-yard field goal attempt. It's 21-0 on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard at the half. And uh, right now, Luke, just kind of your impressions from how the Red Devils are, are playing so far in the opening 24 minutes. You know, the Red Devils, we're firing on all cylinders right now. Defense, you know, holding them to zero in the half. That's great. That's what you like to see. They only had really one, uh, I think, drive that, was, that saw any success, really. But... You know, the Red Devils just doing a nice job again on defense. You know, zero's a great score. We love to see that. But also the air attack and the ground has been there. The ground has been there for the youngsters, uh, Brecken Rich and Jesse Page. But, you know, and then obviously our staple, all-state running back, uh, Brady Roberts, doing a, a great job as well. Um, some good um, offensive plays by the wideouts. You know, Kai Barker making a, a big catch close to the middle of the field. And Drew Barker, you know, just doing what he does best, you know, finding ways to get open. And Conan Morrow doing a nice job keeping his eyes upfield, extending plays a little bit and finding him. You know, the Red Devils, we're, we're doing a good job all the way around, you know, big plays by Kai defensively. The the blitzes have actually been there. We've, we've gotten through in the line of scrimmage. It's just good to see that um, a lot of things are going well. You know, uh, I think I really do think we're peaking at the right time. And, uh, you know, you love to see that going into the playoffs. Um, obviously, the game's not it, over it, yet. It, job's not done yet. Yep. But this is a situation where if Evanston wins, they are in the playoffs for the first time since 2018. That was the final year for Pat Fackrell, the Tyus Cornea year. A lot of uh, big names for Evanston taking them to the playoffs ju uh, five years ago, and Evanston's trying to get back there. Um, if you, there is one adjustment you need to make for the Red Devils, I think it's pretty obvious, the penalties. I mean, they are playing great. They have been definitely controlling this game from start to finish. But think about what you, this could be if you're able to clean out the penalties in that second half. You know, definitely save you some yards for sure. And, you know, you definitely understand where it's coming from, you know, if you're, if you're a coach. But you just gotta, you just got to tell the guys, like, hey, just just calm down, breathe a little bit, go execute the plays, go play how you know how to play football. But they've, they've done a good job other than that, just really just swarming to the ball on defense and just, you know, making plays on the offensive end as well. I was going to do it for our first half highlights on our Uinta Eye and Vision halftime show. When we come back, we'll have a special Red Devil spotlight. You don't want to miss it. You're tuned in to First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football live on MyLocalRadio.com. And K and Wyatt. This presentation on mylocalradio.com is also brought to you in part by Hoover Chiropractic. With over three decades of experience, Dr. Todd Hoover can help you with all the chiropractic work you need, plus x rays, blood work, a weight loss program, and can help you get rid of allergies and migraines. Dr. Todd Hoover with Hoover Chiropractic in Evanston. Precision, the quality, condition, or fact of being exact and accurate. Precision is important. Scoring the next point, making the perfect shot, getting the best score. And when you think of your dentist, you want precision to be the first word that comes to mind. That's why patients are so pleased with Dr. McKay Frankham. He provides precision family dentistry at reasonable prices to every patient. Dr. McKay Frankham, call today for an appointment. Call Dr. McKay Frankham at 789-8910.
And we welcome you back to the Les Schwab Plains Tire Broadcast Booth, our halftime show brought to you by Uintai Envision. And now it is time for our Red Devil Spotlight. And we have a special Red Devil Spotlight. We're going to do a live one with our friend Luke Robinette here. Of course, Luke, not only are you helping me out because you're interested in broadcasting potentially as a senior project, but you're also known for great play on the basketball court. Talk to me a little bit about how excited you are for basketball this year. You know, I'm super amped up. You know, we got a couple guys, you know, going open gyms. Obviously, a lot of our, our football guys are basketball guys as well, so we haven't seen them in a little bit. But we got a lot of youth coming back. You know, we got a, a good addition to the team, Riker Lind. You know, he's a really tall, he's, he's but he plays like a guard, and he's got he's got really good defense and really good hands. So, you know, love that, and you know, just got a really good connection with our coaching staff and just like the players in general. I'm I'm a pretty lucky guy. Uh, I'm you know I don't think there's a lot of people in the state that can say that they truly like love all the team that all the guys that they play with and I can truly say I do I got a relationship with all the all the fellas and you know I'm just super excited to you know for one last ride with them absolutely and I'm excited to see how this goes and also excited to see you call some basketball a little bit with me I think that's gonna be a lot of fun yeah hopefully that that, that would be ideal you know do a little bit of calling and then going down there for game time, you know, it'll be a good time. Maybe do a little bit of girls with me on the road type situation. I hope so, hope so. All right, so this is our Red Devil Spotlight. So I've got 10 kind of fun uh, icebreaker questions. So your job is to pick four numbers between one and 10. So that'll determine your spotlight. Sound good? Okay. All right, so what's that first number gonna be? I'm gonna go with three. Three, all right. What is the best compliment you have ever received? Um, I think one of the best compliments I've ever received is um, my mom will sometimes just get text messages from, you know, either people on the golf team or the basketball team or just kind of whatever I do. And it's when, you know, other you know kids are just complimenting on, you know, like just, just being kind to other people because that's kind of what I try to do. I just try to be, you know, just kind of love everyone and just be the best person I can be. Getting to know you over the, I mean, I, I knew you before this, but actually kind of getting to work with you, I can kind of tell that is definitely something you succeed and excel at making everybody feel welcomed. And you are such a kind hearted person. So I, I think that is a great compliment. Plus you got another compliment in the chat room. Uh, you've got Kathy Dean saying you two are doing awesome work. Well, I definitely could not do it as well as we're doing it tonight without you, Luke. So yeah, thank you. you're doing thank a great so job. Much. All right. And, oh, <laughs> Game Fry, yo, my boy Luke, getting it done. Oh, he yeah. absolutely I love that guy. is. Yeah, he was, my, he was my senior when I was a freshman. He, he's a good <laughs> dude. I love Caden Fry. Absolutely. I, I've worked with him a little bit, too. So, all right, what's that next question going to be? Uh, I'll go with two. Two. What is your most prized possession? My most prized possession? Um, me and Jordan Mendez, we, we got these new basketball shoes over the summer that we worked at Phantom Fireworks for for a while, you know, did a lot of overtime hours for him, and we, we bought these uh, GT cuts, and I bought a pair of the red ones, and he bought a pair of the blue ones, but we, but we switched shoes, so I gave him one of my red ones, he gave me one of the blue ones, I think those are just super cool, you know, kind of bringing the, the red and blue of Evanston, and it's, he's one of my best friends, so that's gonna look that. That's going to look awesome, I'm yeah, excited to see that. Hopefully it looks pretty clean, you know, kind of matching it, up, mismatching it out there. Awesome, alright, what's that next one going to be? Uh, I'll go with four because that's my twin brother's number. All right. What is your favorite holiday? Oh, my favorite holiday? Uh, I'm going to go with two. Like, I love Fourth of July a lot. I love the, the you know, the pyrotechnics. I, I worked at Phantom Fireworks, and mm. so that's kind of what I love to do. You know, Fourth of July, the weather's great, especially in Evanston. We really do have a great Fourth of July. And then also, you know, Christmas is always good. You know, just giving to others and just having a good time at the, in the snowy season. So you're a senior, so this will be your last Christmas at home for a minute. What is the tradition you're looking forward to doing this year with your family? Uh, usually my my grandparents on uh, my grandma and papa, they're from St. George. They, they buy us pajamas and we open them on the, the night uh, of um, open the night of Christmas Eve and I think that's just super fun just seeing all the family and just kind of you know it'd be good to see my older brother who's in college and you know it'll be, it's just kind of been different without him in the home but just love to just converse with the family and just talk to everyone I love it all right what's that last one gonna be I will go with seven seven all right if you could go to any concert who would you see Ooh, if I could go to any concert who would I see me and Cohen Morrow, we always, we always uh, joke around about how we're going to go to Old Dominion concert together. And I love their music, and he does too. And <laughs> so, yeah, pro probably Old Dominion for sure. Well, I think you guys will have an opportunity to do that uh, sooner than later, I would imagine. Yeah, they're coming to Salt Lake here soon. I just got to get some dates <laughs> down. Me and him got to go for sure. Awesome. That is our Red Devil Spotlight, a special one done live. And that is how much of a pro he is. Luke Robinette had no idea this was happening and handled it like a pro. Yeah, big you, shock. You're, you're a great sport, so. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. you so much, Luke. For sure, for sure. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll get you ready for the second half. This concludes our Unit to Eye Envision halftime show. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football, live on MyLocalRadio.com and KNYN. 
our community. We love it, we live it, we support it. Trona Valley is your local credit union and we're proud to invest in relationships that go far beyond banking. We're proud to invest in the lives of our young members and their participation in sports. You're champions in our community and we're here to support you all the way, on a court, on the field, or elsewhere. Together, let's develop lifelong successful financial habits. You got this. We're here for you. Trona Valley, member NCUA, tronavalley.com. Great signage is an important component to any successful business. It lets your customers know they have arrived at your doors and it's a constant advertisement of who you are. When you install LED signage, you're taking it one step further. The ability to create color messages that move is an attention grabber. Plus, you can change the message whenever you would like. Make your business stand out with an LED sign from Rocky Mountain Sign, providing service, installation, and maintenance on all signage. Rocky Mountain Sign, licensed in Wyoming and Utah. Call today for a quote, 307 789 5202. Dad, did you know that the iris of your eye is more unique than your fingerprint? Yes, I did. I learned that in optometry school. I'm Dr. Trent Clooney with Uinta Eye and Vision, where we understand that every eye is unique. We are dedicated to carrying on the tradition of great vision care in Evanston. Quality care like I received growing up here. I care about your individual and unique eye health. With over a decade of experience, I'm excited to have returned to Evanston and once again cheer on the Evanston Red Devils. Call my dad at Uinta I Am Vision to schedule an appointment. 307-789-3937. Welcome back to the Les Schwab Plains Tires broadcast booth. Getting ready for the third quarter, and Luke, right about now, we'd be looking at the out of town scoreboard, and we got a fireworks show <laughs> happening. They're shooting fireworks literally right off of the track. That is fun. But uh, usually we'd be breaking down that out of town scoreboard, but uh, you know what? We're the only one being played in the 3A right uh, tonight. So everybody's, getting, everybody's watching us, everybody's wondering what is going on. And uh, what's going on is the Red Devils lead 21 to nothing here in the uh, locker room. And that's exactly what you want everyone throughout the state to see, especially, you know, the, the whatever team we're going to play on the east side, they're like, oh, big dominant win for the Red Devils against Green River. You yeah. Know, hopefully, obviously, you still got to execute a little bit more here. But excited to see if we can put some more points on the board and, and see some young guys come out here and show us what they got because they've been working hard all season two. So just want to see. Just a bunch of different Red Devils, you know, just find some success today. The only other game of note happening right now, it's number two and nine man, Wind River on top of Rocky Mountain, 24 to eight at the third quarter. And the big one though, happening in our neck of the woods, Lyman had to win by 10 and they were the number two seed. They beat Cokeville 12 to nothing. And now Mountain View's the number one out of the West, Lyman's the number two in the 2A. That's awesome, you'd like and to see that from the Valley. Absolutely. And it content the tradition continues for the Bridger Valley. Yeah, I always cheer for the for the people from the Valley as long as they're not going against the Red Devils. Exactly, and we will see them on the basketball court. I think we're playing Mountain View shortly before the new year. Yep, home and opener. Lyman right after. Yeah, home opener. It'll be good. I'm excited. So we'll get to go to Lyman, but of course uh, basketball. I think it starts December seventh in uh, Casper. Yep, and that tournament we opened up last year. The previous years, Evanston opened the basketball season in Gillette. Of course, you knew that. Yeah. But uh, now we're opening up in uh, Casper. You've played at both areas. Which which ones would you rather open at? I actually like going to Campbell County. You know, the bus ride is definitely not my favorite part. <laughs> but as a freshman, I remember going up there and having to double up with Kai Barker because we had Wade Bowen who needed a whole seat to himself because <laughs> he was so big. So I, I had to double seat it with Kai. But, you know, I like going up to Campbell County because they play at a different speed up there. They, yeah. they, they kind of run and gun it, and I think that's really good. You know, you, you know, most guys coming into basketball season aren't in the greatest of shape. So I like going up there. But, you know, Casper's been good to us. It's been good to, you know, a little bit short of a drive. Obviously, Casper's still a ways away. But, you know, that one's good too. And Casper's got some great facilities. I mean, that gym at Kelly Walsh, the, the kind of old-school classic gym at Natrona County, there are some great facilities that we get to go play at uh, this December. And, you know, it sounds like it's a ways away, but – it's really not. It's yeah. going to come here before you know it, and I'm just excited to see what uh, you and, of course, the Lady Red Devils are guys are able to do uh, this season. Of course, Rob Watsbaugh enters year four, and uh, Roy Barker back on the 
sidelines for an Evanston basketball team as he takes over the Lady Red Devils. Yeah, I love Coach Barker. It'll be good, too, because I definitely know that he'll be giving us some tips, too, because Coach Bar Barker's very knowledgeable, and I love his coaching. Me and him are always debating on, you know, just all kinds of different sports, and I'm always picking his brain. And so I'd love to see him and have him travel with us, too. Let's talk about another first-year head coach who is getting it done this year, and that is Coach Steve Moore, Evanston football coach. The, the excitement around town when it was announced that it was going to be Steve Moore as the head, new head football coach for Evanston was palpable, and things are starting to uh, show why. Evanston seems to be a stronger football team. Every week they go out, and they're halfway there. They are halfway to the goal of punching their ticket to the playoffs for the first time in five years. You know, I remember when the coaching spot was up for grabs. I remember all, all my football buddies just telling me, like, dude, I want more. I want Coach more." You know, he's our guy, and, you know, it's, it's been showing. You know, he's, he's been putting the guys to work, and they've been responding. I mean, this summer, our, our weight room, we did a nice job, you know, just getting a lot of people in there working hard. And I think we're seeing the fruits of that labor, you know, on the football field and hopefully in other areas of athletics too. But I think he's honestly done a really good job just starting off a lot of good momentum for just the school in general and just kind of getting back to, you know, getting to the playoffs, you know, breaking that, that – uh, streak of not getting to the playoffs and hopefully you know basketball will be able to follow suit get to get to state we haven't been there in a little bit so you know i think you know the culture this year in the high school definitely just feels different and it's been a great different we aren't done for the week yet after tonight we will have a friday off in a fall which is very very rare but then we're back at it again on saturday 12 30 p.m start time for our pregame show brought to you by Kazin's Ace and Furniture, it's Evanston Volleyball wrapping up the regular season at Jackson with a 1 o'clock first serve. You mentioned basketball. I just saw Coach Rob Watsabaugh walk up the uh, the uh, the bleachers here taking his spot in the coach's box. And uh, he, I know when I talked with him, he is very excited about the season. Yeah, no, Coach Watts, he's a, he's a tall guy, so he's hard to miss coming up through <laughs> there. You know, yeah, he's super excited. You know, we've, we've put in a lot of stuff last year, and we – we kind of didn't get to, to peak at the right time, but, you know, he's excited because we got a lot of young guys coming back. The chemistry is really good. You know, our, he's done a nice job building the culture for us and just, you know, he's connected with a lot of us older guys, you know. Uh, if you know Coach Watts, he's not much of a talker, but, you know, we, we know him a little bit differently. Once you kind of break him in a little bit, we've got a pretty cool connection. So I'm super excited to, you know, just get working with him and Coach Kofed for sure. Definitely two of my some of my favorite coaches I've ever had. And, we, I think, you know, we're really going to do some damage this year. Of course, we're talking about Austin Kofed. He is the assistant coach for the boys' varsity team. Uh, real quick, checking in on the My Local Radio chat room. we got to give a huge thanks. It is the most active we've seen in a while. Kathy Dean, Jose Juarez, Kathy Muir, Caden Fry, and Jackson Badolf saying, yes, sir, how about them devils? Yeah, nickname Petrie. <laughs> Jackson Bidolf, you know, he does, he does a good job. So here we go. One minute and 20 seconds remaining in the halftime. Also, shout out to Don Cogger, Uinta County Herald Sports Editor. And to everyone watching from home in Evanston, or if you're a Green River fan, we welcome you as well. You know, Evanston doing a nice job bringing a lot of people out to come support. You love to see that, you know, just showing the guys, you know, kind of repaying them a little bit for all the hard work they've put putting in all season. You'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard that they brought a bus for the student section. Yeah, so no, we did, we did, especially because <laughs> the dancers were dancing too. So we decided yep. to just, you know, bring a bus. And I, I came with some buddies and, you know, they're over in the student section, you know, getting it all hyped up and doing a good job. Uh, the student section of Evanston, of course. Now, now that I've been to every venue, I guess you can say, in 4A, there, there's nothing like being at home in Evanston. Yeah, I know. Especially I, I, I love football, and I love being in the student section for football, but I love the basketball. Energy. Oh, that. You know, a little indoors gets a little rowdy. It's, it's a good time. You get that Kevin Callis music going. Shout out to our friend Kevin Callis. I know you're tuned in right now. As we got three seconds left in the half, and Evanston leads it 21 to nothing. A one-yard touchdown dive with 5.43 left in the first by Cohen Morrow, then a three-yard touchdown run by uh, Brady Roberts with 3.53 in the first. Drew Barker with a 27-yard touchdown reception, and those are your three touchdowns for Evanston. The biggest play for Green River was 
the sack by James Herwalt of Cohen Morrow as the Red Devils will receive the second half kickoff. And by the way, the reason that was so big was Evanston was driving and they looked like they were going to score a touchdown before the half, but that pushed them and made that uh, field goal attempt by Mendez all the more difficult. Drew and Kai Barker back to receive the kickoff, and it is at the feet of Kai. He picks it up, now goes towards the far sideline, puts up a stiff arm, picks up a block, has some room to work with, and Kai Barker out to the 35-yard line of the Red Devils, and that's where they'll start. Kai Barker doing a great job breaking out outside and you know, kind of fumbled it a little bit with his feet, but you know, got the ball and just made a nice game there. Morrow now runs out. Good to see Drew Barker back on the field. He came off towards the end of that first half, kind of shaking his shoulder a little bit. Uh, he looks locked and loaded and ready to go. 11 minutes and 51 seconds. As Cole Robinette comes out. 11.51, ball on the 35-yard line of Evanston. Morrow in the gun. He's got Roberts off of his right sideline as a football-shaped Aluminum balloon takes to the Green River Sky. Hand off to Roberts. He busts forward, and Roberts continues to fight forward, picks up three yards on the play. Red Devils going back to the run game there. You know, they want to give it to Brady Roberts, all-state running back. Doing a nice job picking up a little bit there, just kind of like what Coach Burton said last year, just picking up some quiet yards, and those will start to stack up. Herwalt and Stewart in on the stop, and it's second down and eight from the 37-yard line of Evanston. 11 minutes, 23 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Morrow under center, strong eye formation. Cole Robinette, the fullback. Roberts, the deep back, and it is a handoff to Roberts, and he is wrapped up, but he fights his way forward again out to the 40 and picks up three yards on the play. So it'll be third down and medium. More on the longer side of medium is it'll be third and six. Ooh, from the 39. Turning out up here. And still have power in the press box, so that's good. And there's the lights again <laughs> coming back on. Morrow in the gun, third and six from their own 39. Takes the shotgun, snap, goes for the quick pass, throws, and that is caught by Kai Barker with a diving catch as that one was broken up. Check that, no, they roll it incomplete, and it'll be fourth down. Looked like a potential catch, but must have hit the ground before the turf. Good view by the referees down there. So we are way up here in the box. 10 minutes, 31 seconds, and Kai Barker back to punt it away for the Red Devils. Axel McKinnon back to receive for Green River. Standing around his own 25, and a whistle on the play. And it's a false start on the Red Devils. So that'll push him back to fourth and 11 from the 34 yard line. Again, the penalties are making things a little bit more difficult for Evanston than it needs to be. Parker standing around his own 20, snap right at his helmet, gets a booming punt off. McKinnon makes the catch inside the 25 and that's where they'll start. Great punt by Kai Barker. He's done a phenomenal job on special teams all year. He really has one of the best punters I've honestly truly ever seen play high school football. So first and 10 from the 34 yard line is where they will mark this one off. Check that, 23, that's what I thought. 10 minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the, half, in the uh, third quarter. Red Devils up 21 to nothing. Hints in the gun. He's got Gomez out there with him. Sends a man in motion. It is Lee. Takes his time. Now lifts the leg. Sends another man in motion. Takes a snap. And keeps it himself. Tries to roll up the field. And he's gang tackled. After a good gain there. Probably about six or seven yards. So Hints keeps the clock rolling. It'll be second down. And about four, uh, six on the play. Green River doing a nice job sending the man in motion, getting to the outside and blocking there for a, a definitely a good pickup on, on the first down. 
So gain of six make it second and four from the 29 of Green River. Under 10 minutes to play in the quarter. And that's the other thing that's kind of working in Evanston's favor is that clock has very rarely stopped. Hints drops back to pass, looking to throw, gets it out to Herwalt, caught at the 30. Turns up field, gets to the 40, picks up a block and a first down for Green River right around the 43-44 yard line. Green River coming out of the half, doing a nice job moving the chains. They got they got a stop on the Red Devils, and now they're moving it. So Evanston's really got to key down, you know, just key in right here and just get a stop. You know, it's 21-0. Don't want to don't want to be letting up anytime soon. 14-yard gain for Herwalt on the short pass. Nine minutes, 18 seconds remaining in the third. Ball in the near hash on the 43-yard line of Green River. First and ten. Hints in the gun. Takes the snap, and it's a quarterback run, and he puts on the stiff arm, turns up at the 40, and then Kai Barker meets him right around the 45 and drives him out at the 46. Small pickup there. Cole doing a nice job getting to the quarterback. Didn't make the tackle, but definitely pushed him outside a little bit. Second down and seven as Barker drives him out of bounds on the near sideline towards the Green River bench. Second down and seven. Hints in the gun. He's got Gomez back there off his left hip. Tries to send, do the hard count. And Evanston jumps again. I'll make it second down and two after the five-yard penalty. Evanston still trying to get the timing of that blitz. It's, we've been doing that all game with Breckenridge and Cohen Morrow. I think that's two that we've had on, on those two guys. But they're doing a nice job. They're playing aggressively, and that's what you want to do when you're having the blitz, and you're going to have a couple of those. 9-0-1 left in the third quarter. Red Devils lead 21-0 on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard. Green River looking good on this drive. Ball on the 49-yard line of the Wolves. Hand off to Gomez, and he will get met right around the line of scrimmage. Maybe picks up a yard on the play. And it'll be third down and short. On the second and short, the Red Devils decided to bring in all the linebackers. They were coming all in. Cole's on the right side. Cohen Morrow was a little bit more on that left side. Did a nice job, Cohen Morrow, wrapping up and taking, the, taking him down. One yard gain on the play. Third and one at the Evanston 48. Has to get out to the 47 for the Wolves. And at this point, you got to imagine we're probably around four down territory as well. What he got to lose. Hints under center, Herwalt in the backfield. Takes the snap, hands it off to Herwalt, and he will bully his way forward to the 46-yard line. They're going to give him the 45, and it's first and 10, Green River. Eight minutes and 11 seconds remaining on the scoreboard here. Red Devils lead 21-0 on the Heritage Auto of Evanston board. Green River O-line did a, did a great job there. They opened it up just enough for the tailback to slide through and pick up the first down. Green River, you know, mounting a really nice drive here so far. Under eight minutes to play in the third quarter. Is this clock, much like that opening Evanston drive, has not stopped. Hints in the gun, or excuse me, under center. Gomez in the backfield. Takes the snap and flicks that one out to McKinnon and wrapped up and brought down by Kai Barker. Ball's loose and it is picked up by the Red Devils, but did they get out of bounds first? I think the ball went off of the Red Devils and out of bounds. It'll go back to Green River. Red Devils doing a nice job there, forcing the fumble. I think Drew got a little surprised. He was just ready for the tackle. Kind of fumbled around his feet there, but still, regardless of not picking up the fumble, it was a great play there, making plays behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of five yards, second down on the 49 of Evanston. Have to get it out to the 35. So second down and long, and in the gun is hints, but now we have a stoppage of play. Referee's discussing something here. Seven and a half minutes remaining in this third quarter. as Brooke Searle will come on for Drew Barker. Takes his place in the secondary. Hints in the gun. Gomez off of his left hip, trips to the far side of the 
formation. Hints looking to pass. Throws. That is nearly intercepted by Brooks Searle. Right around the 35-yard line of Evanston. It'll be third and 14. Brooks Searle, the young guy, the junior, going up for the ball. He's, he's not terribly big either, but way to pursue the ball and just make a great play there on defense. He made some plays in the JV game last night. Yes, he is. He's very explosive. He's a super athletic kid, you know, and, he, and he plays hard in every, everything he does, basketball, soccer, and football. By the way, I think the final score of that JV game was Evanston 28, Green River 6. Hints in the gun. Same formation. Three wide receivers to the far side, one to the near with Gomez off of his right hip. Seven minutes and 23 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Third and 14 on their own 49. Hints takes the snap, passing down, dropping back. Here comes the pressure. Hints is going to try to run it and wrapped up by Clayton Cook. Taryn Hawes had a chance to get back there as well as he just absolutely terrorized him in the backfield, made him go towards that sideline and gave him no passing lane on third and long. And Clayton Cook was ready and waiting. Evanston Red Devils defense, you know, gave up a couple yards here earlier in this drive, but, you know, they're looking fearless out there. Clayton Cook doing a nice job pursuing the ball carrier and just making a, a physical play there. Fourth and 15. Ball on the 50-yard line. And Hinson and company are going to go for it. Three at the top, one at the bottom. Gomez off of the right hip now. Six minutes and 38 seconds remaining. Hints dropping back to pass. Have to get to the 35. Tucks it and runs it himself, and he is goes right into the waiting arms of Cohen Morrow. Wraps up and brings him down at the 45. Turnover on downs to Evanston. Great stop there by our All-State middle linebacker, Cohen Morrow. Doing a great job hustling to the ball. You know, we knew we couldn't be, give up anything deep, and Cohen just does a nice job, you know, ending it there for the, for the Wolves. So first and 10, Red Devils. From their own 45. Has to get it out to the Green River 45 to pick that one up. And with six minutes and 29 seconds left in the third, it'll be on the far hash. Morrow in the gun. He's got, looks like Roberts back there with him. Takes the snap, and it is indeed a handoff to the senior. Roberts goes off the left tackle and picks up a good chunk of yardage, about six or seven on the play. Second down in Green River Territory. We'll spot it at the 48. So a gain of seven on the play, second down and three. The E-Town O-Line doing a nice job there, making some space for Brady Roberts there, doing a good job in the trenches. Absolutely. Six minutes and two seconds remaining as this game has kind of slowed down a little bit, and I think that's what Evanston wants. Morrow takes a snap, handoff to Roberts, goes off the right tackle. He's going to pick up the first down, has a head of steam, out to the 30, to the 20, the 10, and he is wrapped up and brought down just shy of the goal line. A huge gain by Brady Roberts. Again, great blocking there, but great read by Brady Roberts. He was behind the line, and he realized that he could break outside and take out a big chunk of yards there, and that's what, exactly what he does. Roberts with a 47-yard gain, and it's first and goal on the one. Five minutes, 37 seconds remaining. Yeah, Brady's got to be a little disappointed there. He definitely thought he was going to get to the end zone, <laughs> getting tackled at the one. First and goal from the two, so it is a 46-yard gain. Either way, it is a monster gain and a potential dagger. Tonight, Morrow under center, Roberts standing in the backfield. Takes the snap, pitches it out to Roberts, and he will waltz into the end zone. Touchdown, Evanston. Well, he got his touchdown. It just took him one more play. Good job by Brady Roberts. Getting us down there and putting it in the end zone. 27-0 Evanston as Mendez will come out and kick this one out off. Roberts. With a two-yard touchdown gain with 5.04 left in the third. Mendez to kick the extra points. High snap, put down, kick is up, and it is good. 28-0, Red Devils. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football live on MyLocalRadio.com and KNYN. 
we're off to the rodeo. My Local Rodeo is proud to bring you live streaming coverage of high school rodeo from Utah and Wyoming, as well as the Intermountain Icebreaker of the National High School Rodeo Association's Western Legacy Series in 2023 and 2024. If you're interested in becoming a broadcast sponsor and advertising your business to the most loyal group of viewers in the country, you won't find a better opportunity. Call us today to claim your spot, 307-789-8116. That's 307-789-8116. We're off to the rodeo. Five oh four left in the third, and the Red Devils lead it 28 to nothing on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard. If you missed our pregame show, David Suttle from Wild Preps came on and said, it's very simple for Evanston, win and you're in. Yeah, no, that's got to be awesome. And the Red Devils are starting to feel that excitement. You can kind of tell you, you get that energy for sure. And, you know, just super happy for them doing a good job and just, you know, scoring at will now and, you know, doing a nice job defensively, not letting up anything. 5.04 left in the third as Mendez will kick it off to, Evans, or to Axel McKinnon of Green River. Nice end over end kick will bounce up, picked up around the 20 by Herwalt, and he'll get out to about the 33, 34 yard line. Check that, that was actually JD Walther, five foot eight sophomore. That's, you, you look at this roster, Luke, a lot of 10s and 11s under grade. So this is a team that is going to be a team that's gonna build and they're gonna develop kind of a situation we were in just a few years ago. Exactly, so it's, it's good to see them right now, you know, as a coaching staff and as the young guys, you know, as we mentioned earlier, just seeing how they play and kind of getting to know how they play football and hopefully, you know, take that and use that next year. You, the impression you get from Green River quarter uh, coach Blaine Christensen is he really cares about this team. As Hintz rolls out to pass throws, that is nearly intercepted by Drew Barker around the 45 yard line. It was kind of a scramble emergency pass out to Axel McKinnon and Drew Barker almost jumped the route. Yeah, no, Drew Barker doing a nice job there. You know, putting the, putting the seatbelt on right there and really getting a good stop there. Making a play on the ball and that's what he likes to do. Typically he's going for the interceptions, but you know, nice job making the deflection there. Got to keep your heads up around here. Shirt cannons being shot from the track and that one hit the window of the press box. So. Uh, yeah, we'll have to keep our, our eyes up. Yeah, we'll have to stay alert for sure. 451 remaining in the third quarter. Red Devils up 28 to nothing on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard. And can begin dreaming. Not focusing, but uh, but maybe Red Devil fans can begin dreaming. The Red Devils on the field, I think they need to, they're going to focus on closing the deal. Pass out to McKinnon, and he's got nowhere to go. Just swarm by a wall of white. Loss of four yards on the play as he goes from the far hash to the near sideline. And there's one, two, three, four, five Red Devils getting up off of the pile. If you're a defensive coordinator, you are grinning ear to ear right now. That is exactly what you want to see from the Evanston Red Devils. Just tons of guys making plays on the ball, you know, playing aggressive. And that's what you want on defense, you know, and the, the Red Devils are certainly bringing that energy today. Dax Taylor checking in for Green River, of course. If that name sounds familiar, Taylor, well, that is Dylan Taylor's younger brother, according to voice of the Green River Wolves, Eric Polly. And if you don't know the name D Dylan Taylor, you probably didn't watch a lot of 4A basketball over the last couple years. He was an absolute dynamo for Green River in his career. Actually came close to breaking the Green River points record in Evanston in a conference game a couple years ago. 4.07 left in the third quarter and Hintz is brought down. The Red Devils brought the house and came barreling through the front door. Fourth and long. Love to see that from the Evanston defensive line. You know, there's only three of them, but they, they're playing hard and they're, they're going at it every single play. Aiden Lichty, Zane Leland, and um, Taylor Hawes doing a nice job making plays back there, so good for them. High fives all around the Red Devil defensive line and now you've got no choice to punt it away if you are Jackson Gomez. 3.34 and counting left in the third. Evanston up by 28. Snap right at him. Punt is up. High spinning punt, and that'll drop down right 
at the 50, Kai Barker waves a fair catch, and he actually stepped inside the 50 by a while, about two or three yards in there. And it'll be first and 10 at the 46 of Green River for the Red Devils. And, uh, Luke, you got to think one more here, and that might be a backbreaker for Green River. Yeah, that, that, that might be when we start to, to sit a little, a couple of the seniors and some of our, our big play guys and just put in the, the young guys. But still, you know, I think definitely one more possession. Try to do what you can and still try to execute here and get some momentum offensively. Mario in the gun. He's got Roberts off of the right hip. Takes the shotgun snap, hand off to Roberts. Nope, play action, keeps it himself. Makes one man miss, sidesteps another out to the 40-yard line. It's Cohen Morrow to the near sideline and a good pickup of about five yards for Cohen. A little misdirection there, you know, using the All-State running back. Brady is a little bit of a decoy, and Cohen Morrow, he's, he's a big guy too. You know, he, he's a hard runner. I, he's definitely not someone I would like to bring down, that's for sure. Second down and six from the 42-yard line of Green River. Two minutes and 46 seconds and counting left in this third quarter in Evanston. I think we're going to see a lot of running, not a lot of passing unless they get behind the sticks because I think they want this clock to wind down as quickly as possible. Morrow in the gun, two split to the far side. Takes the shotgun snap, now just pitches that one out to Kai Barker, gets through one tackler, and here comes the pack of Wolves after he's picked up the first down at the 35-yard line. Creative play by the Red Devils there. Taron Haas kind of pulling and leading the way for Kai a little bit. Kai doing a nice job running the ball and moving the chains. Nice little shovel pass by Cohen to Kai as he will jog off the field, and on comes Cole Robinette and Aiden Lichty. Or check that, not Aiden Lichty. Yeah, it is Aiden Lichty, sorry. Under two minutes to play in the third. First and 10 from the Green River 35. Bronson Sims, keep an eye on him. He's at the far side of the formation. Under center, strong eye formation with Robinette as the halfback, Roberts as the deep. Takes the snap, hands it off to Roberts, has a big hole and goes through. Good gain on the play of about five for the Red Devils. So I'll bring up second down and five from the 30 yard line of Green River. 90 seconds left in the third quarter. Wish I had a stat sheet right now of how many yards Brady's got. <laughs> no, right? He, he's got a lot, that's for sure. Drew Barker comes off the field. So does Brooks Searle. So a minute 13 and counting remaining in this third quarter. Morrow under center, strong eye formation. It's again Roberts the deep back, Cole Robinette in the fullback position. Takes the snap and pitches it out to Roberts. Picks up a block, goes towards the left side, and Roberts fights his way forward. And here comes the tug of war, and Roberts still on his feet, dragging more and more Wolves inside the 15. I thought they had him down about 10 yards ago, but Brady Roberts turns 15 the most difficult way possible. You know, if I said it once, I've said it a million times. Brady <laughs> Roberts, he... He just plays physical. He, you know, he's not afraid of contact. You know, he saw the outside wasn't going to work out there, so he decided to cut up field and just, you know, go right at the right at the defense. And he's been doing that all game. And he just, he's not afraid of anyone. That's for sure. He dragged close to six wolves with him. That additional ten yards. First and ten on the 15 of Green River. 20 seconds remaining in the third. Morrow takes the snap, hands off to Roberts. Goes towards the right side and Roberts to the 10 yard line. Five yard pickup for Evanston's senior Brady Roberts, and he is having a game that I think a lot of people are going to be paying attention to tonight. Ten seconds remaining in the third quarter. Clock continues to wind, and we'll see if Evanston does do another play before we take a break for the fourth. And they're going to walk off, and we'll take a break. Going into the fourth, it's Evanston 28, Green River nothing on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard. We'll be right back after this. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football, live on MyLocalRadio.com and KNY. At the Evanston Walmart, you'll find all the tools students need to succeed. Our team is committed to providing quality products and an excellent shopping experience. Stop in today, 125 North 2nd Street, Evanston. Walmart. Save money, live better. Explore Logan, Utah. We've got so much awesomeness, I don't know where to begin. Your hotel is only 10 minutes from the gorgeous National Forest for hiking and biking, bird watching, and wildflower spying. 
Logan is Utah's heart of the arts with more than 253 live professional performances this summer and free concerts every weekday. Catch the Garter's Market and tons of festivals and fun. Head to Logan. You won't break the bank on less than a tank. ExploreLogan.com. When you drive on the best tires that are rotated, balanced, and inflated properly, you can save money two ways. The best tires can reduce wear and tear on your vehicle. That saves you money in the long run. The best tires can also improve your overall miles per gallon. That helps you save every time to fill up at the pump. At Freeway Tire in Evanston, we offer the best tires with the best service for every vehicle. Make sure you're running on the best tires you can. Visit Freeway Tire today, 217 Bear River Drive, Evanston. Fourth quarter coming up. Red Devils with a 28 to nothing lead on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard. And it is second down and two from the eight. Hand off to Cole Robinette and he'll drag the pile as he in. Touchdown Red Devils, Cole Robinette. Love to see the twin getting out. in there. That's Cole's first ever touchdown, I believe. Great job by you know, the Evanston O-line. You know, Plugging away for him in the fullback, Cole Robinette does a nice job just keeping his wheels moving. And he's a physical player, too, so I, I know he's just amped up right now. Uh, it makes me super happy to see. <laughs> Brother watching you from the Les Schwab Plains Tire broadcast booth, Cole, as that was a great run by Robinette, yeah. much like what we saw from Roberts. As Rich will go out to hold, Mendez kick is up, and it is tipped and short. 34 0 uh, Evanston on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football live on mylocalradio.com and KNY. When you're looking for great deals on a vehicle, you'll find them at Rocky Mountain Yeti in Evanston. With two locations to serve you, let your adventure start here. Rocky Mountain Yeti in Evanston, legend driven. Welcome back to the Les Schwab Plains Tires broadcast booth. And Elon Olive joined by Luke Robinette. And Luke, stranger things have happened, but you look at the score, you look at the quarter, you look at the time left 11.53. Up by 34 points. Stranger things have happened, but it looks like the streak, the playoff, lit, the playoff drought, could be coming to an end in Evanston. Yeah, no, absolutely, and the, and the guys are really feeling that now, you know, more than ever, you know, and it's definitely super exciting. It's definitely something to celebrate for sure, because there's been a lot of hard work put in by coaching staff and players, and you know, it's just good to see, you know, that hard work pay off. But you know, still got to close it out here. But I think the biggest thing is, you know, once you get up by this much, it definitely plays into the psyche of the opposing team. So. Evanston doing a nice job. Just you know, start starting. We started really um, fast, early. Just put up points, and we haven't really looked back. So that's and, great to see. And how about the defensive performance by the Red Devils, looking for their first shutout of the season? They could have had the shutout against uh, a few opponents. As they'll go ahead and squib kick this one, it bounces past the would-be receiver and smacked down at the 15. Brought down, spun down. Great kick recover, a uh, return, uh, coverage, and Brayden Wallace. B. Wallace, the sophomore, doing a nice job making a play as the young guy. Caden Marler not far behind, but you know he, he's a super physical player too. So love to see that. So it was a squib kick, fumbled by a Green River player, and we got a flag on the play, and then spun down and brought down personal foul on the kicking team. That's a 15-yard penalty, so that'll march them out. I think he had stepped out of bounds before, and, and Braden was yep. just pursuing the tackle. You like to see that, you know, if you're a special teams guy, you know, you want him to make sure it's tackle. But I think Braden just didn't know that he might have stepped out of bounds already. Anyway, it was a muffed reception of the kick. Got behind the would-be returner. Picked up at the last minute by Green River, and then Braden Walls comes up and just spins him around and sets him down. 11:47, first and 10 on the 30 after the penalty for the Red Devils. Max Hintz, sophomore quarterback in the gun, takes a snap, hands it off to Herwalt. Evanston was ready for it. 
Herwalt's line just gets, or excuse me, Evanston's line just gets to Herwalt and says minimal two yards. Evanston knows they're up and they've been dominating all game, but they decide, you know, not to not to turn that off and they play all the way till the whistle. It's great to see from the from the boys in white. So 11 minutes, 35 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. Starting uh, to see some more young guys coming in here. Caden Marlar, number 21. I, I do like that number. It's a good number for sure. I like the band playing the uh, Fox NFL tune. That, that feels awesome. Great shout out to the Green River Band for providing such great atmosphere all night. Shotgun snapped hints, throws, and that is caught by Green River's Christian Lee right around the 35, 34 yard line. So it'll be third down and about six. So gain of two on the play. Max Hintz doing a nice job of just you know stepping up in the pocket and delivering a, a nice quick ball to his wide out on the, on the right side, but Bronson's it, doing a nice job on the tackle. It's sure. not the season he wanted, I'm sure, as a sophomore quarterback coming in. But, man, he has shown that he can flush out. He can pass the ball. He's only a sophomore. He is going to be one to keep an eye on. Hints throws. Intercepted by Cohen Morrow at the 40 to the 35. Brought down by Jackson Gomez and the Red Devils with another turnover on Cohen Morrow. Just might be ending it himself in a few minutes with another touchdown. Cohen Morrow doing a nice job. I can definitely tell he was excited about that interception. You know, playing a middle linebacker, you're not you're not getting a lot of those interceptions. Sorry. You can tell he's definitely glad he got that one. Put it on the resume for sure. 10.44 left in the fourth. And the Red Devils take over inside the Green River 30. Young quarterback Max, Max Hintz has nothing to hang his head about. This has been a valiant attempt by him. Again, he has shown some real talent and some real ability to scramble, some real ability to air it out, hand off to Page, and he's wrapped up and brought down by Herwalt. Starting to go with the young guys. You can tell Jesse Page going in at tailback there, and uh, you got Jordan Mendez lined up on the left, and Brooks Searle and Clayton Cook. All four of those guys are juniors, so, you know, if you're a, you know, Red Devil football fan, you, you want to look in and see kind of what guys are going to have next year and hopefully, you know, just they get a real feel for it and just, you know, all good things for them. And there, there's some real players out there. Second down and 10. Ball on the 29-yard line of Green River. But again, with 10 minutes left, the Red Devils on the verge of getting something big here. Hand off to Page. Nice move by Page on the shimmy. Picks up some big yards out to the 20. He's going to be marked out of bounds, though, right at the 20. And it'll be third down and one. I can't tell the future, but it looks like the Red Devils will be having not a lot of problems running the football next year for sure. You know, two great tailbacks. Penalty on the Red Devils. Didn't catch what the sign was there from the referee. Okay, did I think he marks the ball back to the 36-yard line. So now the Red Devils with a long first down here. So first down at the 36, they got to get it to the 19. So a long ways to go, first and 15. There's the go big red chant. Under center, strong eye formation. Hand off to Page, puts on a stiff arm, gets a word through another defender. Still on his feet, out to the 20, to the 15, 10, 5. And he is going to be marked. Just short of the end zone. A huge 35-yard gain by Jesse Page, the junior. Didn't have a lot going towards the middle, so he decided to cut up the left side of the field and you know, shed a few tacklers on his way doing it. Great run by Jesse Page. 9.45 left in the game. First and goal from the one-yard line. Page with a big run there. 
create some excitement for the future. I have a feeling we'll be talking about him for a little bit. Morrow, under center. Takes the snap, hands it off to Brecken Rich, and he waltzes in. Touchdown, Red Devils. The other junior, number 25, doing a nice job on the, on the short touchdown run, doing a good job in the O-line. Just as they've been doing all game, doing a nice job creating space for the, the running backs to get through. And it's now 40 to nothing, Red Devils. Mendez to attempt the extra point with 9.41 remaining in this one. Rich, the touchdown scorer to hold. Kick is up. And it's good. Red Devils lead 41 to nothing. You're tuned in on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football live on mylocalradio.com and KNYN. <laughs> We're off to the rodeo. My Local Rodeo is proud to bring you live streaming coverage of high school rodeo from Utah and Wyoming, as well as the Intermountain Icebreaker of the National High School Rodeo Association's Western Legacy Series in 2023 and 2024. If you're interested in becoming a broadcast sponsor and advertising your business to the most loyal group of viewers in the country, you won't find a better opportunity. Call us today to claim your spot, 307-789-8116. That's 307 307- 7789-8116. We're off to the rodeo. Nine minutes and 41 seconds separating Evanston from the end of a playoff drought that goes back to 2018. And Luke, it was actually the year before I got here. So. I have not called an Evanston State football game. I've not been to an Evanston State football game. Uh, if this holds up, I'm excited. Yeah, no, for sure, yeah. I'd love to go see the Evanston Red Devils in the postseason. That'll be, that'll be good. Well, still almost 10 minutes, or just over 10 minutes remaining. Don't want to get overconfident, but this just might be a hill too far for Green River. Nice end over end kick caught by McKinnon at the five for Green River. He takes it dead center up the field, now goes towards the near side, slips a tackle, now to the far side. Nice reverse field there. McKinnon out to the 40, puts on the brakes, still on the sideline, out to the 50, and Axel McKinnon giving the home team something to group for. Yeah, Axel McKinnon doing a nice job reversing field as he's done all game. That one breaks through for a little more than what you'd like to see if you're Evanston special teams, but you know, just a great run, definitely an athletic guy there. Great, uh, didn't get the look we wanted of it on the Clean Energy Instant Replay. Big thank you to our Instant Replay spawner, Clean Energy. Nine minutes, 26 seconds remaining in this one. And now, Max hints, this is going to be some valuable snaps to continue his development as someone to keep an eye on. Only a sophomore got the starting job here in Green River. Hints with Gomez off his left hip, takes a snap, hands off to Gomez. He reverses field, now turns upfield, gets out to the 50, to the near sideline, to the 40, stays in bound, it's a 30, to the 20, and knocked out of bounds by Michael Kopp. And we've got an injury. We'll be right back after this. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football live on mylocalradio.com and KNYN. When participating in sports, there's always a lot to talk about performing at the top of your game. I'd like to expand on that and ask, how about performing at the top of your game in every part of your life? This is Dr. Todd Hoover with Hoover Chiropractic. I offer solutions to help improve all aspects of your game called life. Pain management, migraines, allergies, emotional release, nutritional supplements based on blood tests, and improved athletic performance. To help you perform at the top of your game every day, call today to schedule an appointment in Evanston or in Kemmer, Hoover Chiropractic, 307-788. The game has come to a standstill as we have an injured Green River Wolf on the field as the trainers and all the doctors are 
attending to him. He's getting the absolute best care possible here on the field. We're not going to put the camera on it. We're not going to give too many details because we don't want to bring attention to, I guess, what's going on. But good news, the injured Green River Wolf gets up and walks off on his own power. That was a scary moment. You know, people ask us sometimes, why don't we show injuries? Quite frankly, this is going to live on the internet for a while. And we don't want to have the, what could potentially be a low point for someone be captured on the broadcast. But it is good news to see the injured Green River Wolf. And it was uh, Jackson Gomez walking off on his own power. That is a very good sign. What a run by Gomez there as it is now first and goal from the seven for Green River. Hints looking to pass, steps up, runs towards the end zone. Touchdown, Green River, as Max Hints takes the zero off the board from seven yards out. It didn't take Green River along at all. They did a nice job on that drive. You know, just a couple plays to get in the end zone, put it in for six. Good running, hard running. That's what you like to see, especially from your young guys if you're a Green River fan. Nine minutes, 12 seconds. It didn't take very long at all. About 19 seconds, and it is 41. And they're gonna go for the two-point conversion, and it's no good as they pass out towards the right side. Great defense there for Evanston's Victor Lozano, the sophomore. It's Green River 41, or Evanston 41, Green River six on the Heritage Auto of Evanston score. We're, we're gonna keep it right here. Man, it, it was really, really good to see Jackson Gomez get off and walk off on his own power. Yeah, no, no matter what side you're on, you always want you know what's best for your, your, your high school kids for sure. So good to see that he's okay and hopefully he's he'll, he'll be doing all right here soon. It is loud here as Green River celebrates the touchdown and the Red Devils. Right now, nine minutes and 12 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. And right now, Evanston getting ready to do something they haven't done very often tonight, which is return a kickoff. The band directing the student section here. But uh, hey, Luke, why don't you swing that camera that way to see if we can kind of get a good look at that Evanston student section. There we go. You can kind of see him out the window. That's all. That's the Evanston student section right there. As they showed up here tonight. You know that it took not very long for people to sign up for the <laughs> for the bus trip over here. People wanted to come support. You know, a good football team that we got. Biggest game that we have seen in Evanston in quite a while. There was the game two years ago in Powell where it was a situation where the winner of that game was going to be in the playoffs and the loser of their season came to an end. Powell was victorious that night. That was the year that Evanston started 5-0 and and came up just short of the playoffs. Well, the onside kick goes right into the arms of the Red Devils. Good recovery by Cohen Morrow. Who else could it be? Cohen Morrow, he does it on special teams, defense, and offense. So good job there. Nine minutes and 11 seconds, and we'll see how fast the Red Devils operate here. First and 10 on their own 49 after the onside kick recovery. It is a loud house here in Green River. Hopefully it's not drowning us out. I can't really tell right now. But Red Devils, first and 10 on their own 49. Nine minutes and 11 seconds, strong eye formation. Bronson Sims now in at quarterback, hand off, and it'll be a gain of about one on the play. And the Red Devils are just content to kind of take as much time off the clock as possible. Brecken Rich with the carry. Yeah, the older seniors and, you know, some of the other vets have done a nice job and, and sealed this game away. So we're putting in some young guys and, you know, giving them some reps and some opportunities, and hopefully they can make do with what they got. Jesse Page out there. Sims goes under center. Strong eye formation. 
Fullback is Rich. Page is the halfback. They will hand it off to Rich, and he will barrel his way forward to the 45 of Green River. So a good pick up there on second down. And we'll bring up third and about four. You love to see this from the young guys picking up two really good plays and you know third manageable, third and four. It's definitely nothing we can't do. So good job by the by the young Red Devils. Evanson's going to take their time getting this play off. You know, for sure. Just tune up that clock and try to wind this game down. Eight minutes, two seconds and counting. Left in this one. Sims. Goes under center. Strong eye formation again. This time it is Wallace in the fullback position. Sims with the pass. Throws. Would have been caught around the 40-yard line intended for Carter Moore. Carter Moore, one of those other young guys, at, you know, wide receiver. He's been making a couple plays here on special teams for the Varsity Red Devils, and he's been doing a good job in the, in the JV as well. And now Evanston looks like they'll bring Kai Barker out to punt it back to Green River with 7 minutes and 44 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. Kai standing around his own 40-yard line. Takes the snap, and that one is a high spinner. And that one will drop down and make an Evanston Red Devil roll inside the 15, picked up around the 14 by Bronson Sims. Check that. It was actually... Jordan Mendez. Seven and a half to play. All right, Luke. I think we can talk about it. Here's the situation over in the east. Green, uh, Riverton, Douglas, and uh, Buffalo are all tied at the top of the east. And the situation is, is if both of them win, all three of them win, then Riverton will be the number one. And then there's a whole bunch of other situations that could happen. But the most likely scenario, as both of them are the favorites in their games, if they win, all three win, Evanston could possibly going be going to Riverton for a rematch of the week three game. Throw, and that is, what a one-hand catch by Jarek McKinnon. He's off to the races. No, maybe not. Brooks Searle in pursuit. But Jarek McKinnon with an amazing catch. We got to check that out on the Clean Energy Instant Replay. Beautiful job here by Hitz. Throws this one out. How does McKinnon bring that in? Oh my goodness. And it is 41 to 12 on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard. Jarek McKinnon. Green River may not win this game, but they are not going into the night quietly. You know, the young guy's doing a nice job for sure. Quarterback actually had a, had a great throw, you know, leading it in front of all the defenders and in a spot where no Red Devil could go get it, and the you know, wide receiver made a great play on the ball. Braxton Doak, the 5'11 sophomore, to attempt the extra point. Kick is up, and it is good. 41-13, you're tuned in to a first Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil football, live on mylocalradio.com and KNYN. When you're looking for great deals on a vehicle, you'll find them at Rocky Mountain Yeti in Evanston. With two locations to serve you, let your adventure start here. Rocky Mountain Yeti in Evanston, legend driven. The Green River Wolves are probably not going to win this game, but they had one of the most electrifying plays I have seen all year. Let, we got to watch it again on the Clean Energy Instant Replay. This starts all the way at their own 15 and hints. Fires a bomb. McKinnon has some space. Brings it in on the fingertips on his right hand around the, his own 40 and returns it all the way to the house for about an 85-yard touchdown for the senior Axel McKinnon. Sorry, I was saying Jarek, but Axel McKinnon. Evanston to return the kickoff, but we'll see what Green River decides to do here with seven minutes and 21 seconds.
And it will be a pooch kick, but that one is heading out towards the sideline and picked up by Mendez right around their own 35. That one almost went over the sideline. And we got a flag in the backfield. Pink flags tonight in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And they're going to have to re-kick this one off. And pushing Green River back must have been an illegal formation or something of the like. Seven minutes, 21 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. And we're just past the 8 o'clock hour. But Axel McKinnon with that one-handed grab as that one will be an onside kick, and it is recovered by the Red Devils. Bronson Sims with the hands, and Evanston gets it back with seven minutes, 21 seconds remaining. Two onside kicks that the Red Devils have recovered pretty successfully, so I'd love to see that for the special teams. Cohen Morrow takes the field again. So the Red Devils probably looking to hold on to this ball. Morrow hands that one off to Roberts and he will go forward. Pick up about five yards on the play. Brady, a nice run on the first and 10. Moving it four or five yards there, looking good. Just keep that clock moving, wind this game down. Six minutes and 57 seconds remaining in this one. Morrow goes under center, strong eye formation yet again. Breckenridge, the halfback, or the fullback rather. Roberts, the deep back. Morrow takes a snap, handoff to Rich, and he will go forward. Picks up about two yards on the play. It'll be second down, or third down, and three. Next in the line, doing a good job staying physical and staying committed to the blocks. Even though the game's well in hand, they're just executing. They're just making a bunch of noise right now. To Actually, it was a train coming down the tracks is what the Green River Band was trying to simulate there. Morrow under center, taking his time getting this snap off. Third and three from the Green River 38. Under six minutes to play. Takes the snap, hands it off to Roberts, and he's got the first down. Still moving his feet. Roberts busts loose out to the 20, to the 15. Still on his feet, wrestling to the 10. Are you kidding me? He may get to the five, and they're going to mark him at the seven-yard line. A 21-yard run by Brady Roberts the hard way. That train that Greener was trying to impersonate might as well be Brady Roberts. He just, you know, he never stops moving, just chugging those feet along, and... He's just been getting after it all day. He's got to be over 100 yards. There's no way he's not. Yeah. He's, you know, and I, I'd love to see what his his yards after first contact are because he just he just keeps moving. And, you know, good job by the other Red Devils, too. Just keep pushing from behind. First and goal from the Green River 7 for Evanston with five minutes and 17 seconds remaining. Another strong eye formation. This time it is Rich in the backfield with Robinette as the uh, fullback. Morrow watching the referees, and now he goes under center at the five-minute mark. Takes the snap, hands it off to check that that's Jesse Page, and he will get about a yard on the play. First and goal from the six, or second and goal from the six, with this one being snapped probably around the four-minute mark. That Red Devil fan section ready to erupt. And they'll be able to do it in about four and a half minutes. Great performance by Evanston. 41-13 Red Devils on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard. 
Kind of give it up to this Green River student section, the Green River fans, really this whole stadium. It's felt like a playoff game tonight. No, it really has. They, they've brought the energy for sure, and it, it's gotten louder here at a couple points, absolutely. Four minutes, four seconds left. Morrow under center, hands that one off to the fullback. Looks like Rich. And that'll make it third down and goal from the four. Three minutes, 46 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. As the clock continues to wind. And a timeout taken by Green River. We'll take it as well. Red Devils three and a half minutes away from ending a playoff drought. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football live on MyLocalRadio.com and KNY. We're off to the rodeo. My Local Rodeo is proud to bring you live streaming coverage of high school rodeo from Utah and Wyoming, as well as the Intermountain Icebreaker of the National High School Rodeo Association's Western Legacy Series in 2023 and 2024. If you're interested in becoming a broadcast sponsor and advertising your business to the most loyal group of viewers in the country, you won't find a better opportunity. Call us today to claim your spot, 307-789-8116. That's 307-789-8116. We're off to the rodeo. Two thousand and eighteen. The last time the Evanston Red Devils qualified for the playoffs. Well, in about three minutes and thirty-four seconds, you'll be able to say twenty twenty-three. Morrow, under center, pitches it out to Page. He fights his way forward, and on third and goal, they're going to wrap him up. Gets about a yard on the play, and will be fourth and goal from the two as Morrow jogs off at the quarterback position. We'll see if they decide to go for it or not here. Probably right now for the Evanston Red Devils, it's just all about killing the clock. You're up by a mile right now. 41 to 13 with three minutes and three seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. Going into tonight, Evanston knew what they needed to do, Luke, and they executed nearly to perfection. You know, absolutely. Defense doing a nice job in the first three quarters. Let up two touchdowns, but still, you know, doing a great job. And offensively, you know, we've had everything go our way. The run game, I think, has definitely been our most dominant. Um, Brady Roberts, uh, Breckenridge, and Jesse Page, three tailbacks doing a great job running the football and playing physical. And then, you know, Cohen Morrow's done a great job staying poised in the pocket and knowing when to roll out and just make great decisions all day. And the wide receiver's doing a good job, you know, you know catching everything he's been throwing at him. And just, it's been, a, it's been a great game all around for the Red Devils. Well, two minutes and 44 seconds left. Timeout called by the Wolves. We're gonna keep it here. As we will know tomorrow night, who the next opponent for Evanston will be in what will be the biggest game that Evanston has seen, Evanston football has seen since 2018. They're gonna be on the road. It'll either be Buffalo, Riverton, or Douglas. Even a slight chance of Warland. We'll find out tomorrow night. But the big thing is Jordan Mendez comes on to attempt a 27, or excuse me, a 17 yard, yeah, 27 yard field goal. Kick is up and it is through the uprights. Red Devils 44, Green River 14. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football live on mylocalradio.com and KNYN. When participating in sports, there's always a lot to talk about performing at the top of your game. I'd like to expand on that and ask, how about performing at the top of your game in every part of your life? This is Dr. Todd Hoover with Hoover Chiropractic. I offer solutions to help improve all aspects of your game called life. Pain management, migraines, allergies, emotional release, nutritional supplements based on blood tests, and improved athletic performance. To help you perform at the top of your game every day, call today to schedule an appointment in Evanston or in Kemmer, Hoover Chiropractic, 307 789 
1-800-269-0043. Welcome back to the Les Schwab Plains Tires broadcast booth. Evanston Red Devils, two minutes and 41 seconds away from making it to the playoffs for the first time in five years. We've been saying it ad nauseum as Jordan Mendez prepares to kick it away from right to left on mylocalradio.com. Mendez with the pooch kick, and that one will be caught around the 20 yard line, and he's tripped up by his own player. J.D. Walther tripped up around the 30 yard line. And now Green River will start their probably final drive of the season. As Evanston, Jackson and Green River all competing for that final playoff spot in the West. All competing for that final playoff spot in the West. And with the win tonight, Evanston has clinched that final playoff spot. Hints, the sophomore quarterback who has been impressive at times, in the gun, takes the snap. Looks to go deep, hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Good job by Evanston's Dominic Stewart, the sophomore. Just comes up, puts a hit on Hintz as he's trying to throw that one away. And it's an incomplete pass. Second down to 10, 231 remaining in the game. Yeah, Dominic Stewart, another young guy. He's a sophomore. He plays basketball as well. He's a really big body, and he does a really good job, you know, playing physical, you know, both in the low post and, I guess, on the football field as well. Two minutes, 31 seconds remaining. Second down and 10 on their own 33. Hintz in the gun. Green River still have something to say. Here comes the pressure, sacked. Big rush. Braxton Hanks getting in there. Braxton Hanks indeed, the five foot six sophomore, comes through the line and just shuts that play down. Big loss on the play, a 12 yard loss. And it is third down and 23 from their own 21 with two minutes and two seconds left. Four down territory for Green River, because you got to expect, even if they turn it over deep, this deep in their own territory, Evanston's probably going to kneel out the clock. Trips to the far side for Hintz. Takes the snap, drops back, looking deep, fires deep, and that is caught. No, it goes in and out of the hands of the intended receiver on the far sideline around the 50-yard line. Looked like Dom Jackson, the five foot eight sophomore, almost had a great catch there, and it's fourth and 23 with a minute 41 remaining. Good job on the pass coverage by the young guys, you know, not letting anything go deep. Red Devils up 44 13 on the Heritage Auto of Evanston scoreboard. Hints with a minute 41, takes the shotgun snap, throws on fourth down, caught at the 30. Now they flick it back out to McKinnon, to the 40, to the 50. He's got the first down, to the 40, still in bounds, all the way to the house. Axel McKinnon yet again. Nice trick play there by Green River on the, on the flick back to the other guy running across the field the other way. Nice little reverse, and he runs up the sideline and he houses it. On the clean energy instant replay, McKinnon takes it from one end to the other. And again, Green River are gonna lose, probably not win this game, but they ain't going quietly at all. You gotta respect it. Kick is up and it is good. So that was a 79 yard reception. Great flea flicker out play out there by the Wolves. 
as the extra point is good. 44-14, fireworks in the sky with a minute 27 left. We're gonna keep it right here. We don't wanna risk missing anything as Evanston leads by 24. You know, it feels good. Evanston's gonna have one more possession, kind of kneel out the clock and just go home with a very dominant victory today. J.D. Walter, great heads up play. He makes the catch around the 40 and then gets it, just flicks it out to McKinnon, laterals behind, and then McKinnon streaks down the near sideline. Yeah, it's definitely, you don't ever expect a lateral, especially coming, you know, after the line of scrimmage, absolutely. So, you know, de definitely caught us off guard there, a little misdirection, and good for Green River getting a little creative and, uh, you know, putting it in for, for seven there. In a fourth quarter, that has seen Evanston put up 10 points and Green River put up 20. Check that, 16 points, or 17 points rather, and Green River put up 20. So a flurry of scoring here as Jarek McKinnon, or Axel McKinnon, excuse me, the senior is wanting to go out with a bang. Onside kick right at the Red Devils. That was a hard one. It was more of a pooch than an onside kick. Goes right into the hands of who else but Brady Roberts, and the Red Devils will take over on their own 50. With under 90 seconds left, you got to think maybe running a play to get a first down, and then they're going to kneel this thing out. You know, the Red Devils can feel it. You, you already know. You, you see a lot, of the, a lot of the older guys on the field taking the, the, the final snaps, and they've worked hard for this win, and, you know, they've worked hard to get to these playoffs, you know, not just this year, but, you know, their whole high school career. So this definitely has to feel good. The Red Devils out there with the seniors. 83 seconds separating Evanston from the playoffs. And the victory formation. Morrow's been in a few of these in his career, but none of them have got to feel more sweeter and satisfying than the knees he's going to take over the next minute and change. as the seniors come off for Green River for the last time. And a big round of applause, especially for Axel McKinnon, who has been nothing short of phenomenal tonight, the senior for Green River. 50 seconds remaining. As Green River gives their boys a hand one more time. Morrow under center. Takes the snap, kneels it down with 35 seconds to go. And hugs, high fives. So there's 23 seconds remaining on the clock and Evanston will walk off the field. Potential realized. The Red Devils, for the first time in five years, are back in the 3A West playoffs. Playoff bound Red Devils, that's exactly what you want to hear, you know, coming into this game. We knew what we had to go do and we, we executed to pretty much perfection. Doing a great job all the way around on all sides of the ball. You know, it's got to feel good for, the, you know, the coaching staff doing a nice job turn, turning the program around and, you know, seeing a lot of success. But, you know, you definitely want to celebrate it tomorrow in school and, you know, you know, but just get right back to work because, you know, you're going to have a, a good team from the East that you're playing, the one seed from the East. So, you know. This isn't, you know, this is a great accomplishment, but, um, you know, we're not finished yet. Absolutely not. And uh, really, Luke, you bring up a good point. Tomorrow, they'll have school tomorrow. They'll have a fun t uh, chance to celebrate that with you and all the rest of the classmates. But when Steve Moore took over, the expectation was to end this drought. We knew that we had the talent. We knew we had the skill. Now we've got... A game plan, and we got the coach that ends the drought. It's your final score, Evanston 44, Green River 20, and the Evanston Red Devils are playoff bound. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football, live on mylocalradio.com and KNYN. Out here, we've always worked remote. Out here, stress usually refers to the pull on a rope. 
where a stroll in the city is also a stroll in the great outdoors, where work is a way of life, and life is good. Out here, the backyards are big, and the deals, they're even bigger. This is southwestern Wyoming, and it's where you can get the biggest deals on a vehicle you want with plenty of hometown hospitality. Heritage Auto, your hometown dealer with the biggest deals. Water testing, water development, community enhancement grants, and seedling trees. Education programs and specialty workshops helping to preserve agriculture and natural resources in Uinta County. Uinta County Conservation District is here to serve you. Visit our website today at uintacountycd.com. Friends don't let friends drink bad coffee. <laughs> Come visit, for Pete's sake, for fresh-made coffee, an amazing menu of home-cooked meals, and great company. Visit, for Pete's sake, on the corner of 9th and Main, downtown Evanston. Using the old-fashioned country tradition of barn building, Martin Sheds uses the time-honored construction techniques handed down from generation to generation. For quality, care, and attention to detail, contact Martin Sheds at 307-679-8187 to get a quote today. Fast, fresh, delicious. Three words that describe your experience every time you enjoy a delicious meal with Jimmy John's. Utilizing the freshest ingredients, home-baked bread, and professional sandwich building skills, the team at Jimmy John's always delivers a mouth-watering sandwich to satisfy any hunger. Jimmy John's. Freaky fast, freaky fresh. Visit any of our locations today in Evanston, Rock Springs, Sheridan, and Gillette. The playoff bound Evanston Red Devils on our post game show, kicking it off with our Jimmy John's Freaky Fast Recap. Brought to you by Jimmy John's on 113 Front Street in Evanston, where fast and fresh meet. The scoring got started with a one yard dive by Cohen Morrow with 543 left in the first, then Brady Roberts with a three yard run with 353 left in the first. In the second quarter, Drew Barker makes a 27 yard spectacular catch to make it 21 0. And that's where we would be at the half. In the third quarter, Brady Roberts with a rattles off a 46-yard gain and then goes two more yards the next play to make it 28 to nothing. Then Cole Robinette, after a great run by uh, Roberts again, it looked like, is able to put it in the end zone with 11.53 left in the fourth quarter, making it 34 nothing. Morrow makes an interception less than a minute later. And then... Page gets a 35-yard run, and immediately the next play, they hand off to Brecken Rich with Brecken Rich with 9:41 left in the fourth, making it 41 to nothing. Max Hints gets a seven-yard touchdown scamper with nine minutes and 12 seconds left for Green River to break the zero on the scoreboard, making it 41 to six. And then Axel McKinnon makes a one-handed catch for 80 yards, one of his. Two spectacular touchdowns he had tonight, making it 40-13. to 13. And then a 27-yard field goal by Mendez makes it 44-13. to 13. And then McKinnon, not done yet, a, set, uh, a reception for about 10 yards to J.D. Walther. And then he pitches it back to Axel McKinnon, who just finds the near sideline and streaks down to make it 44 to 20 and that is our final score that's your jimmy john's freaky fast recap brought to you by jimmy john's on 113 front street in evanston where fast and fresh meat we're gonna step aside when we come back we'll have our dr mckay Franklin precision play of the game brought to you by dr mckay Franklin precision dentistry for the whole family call 307-789-8910 for your appointment today you're tuned in to a first bank of wyoming presentation of red devil football live on mylocalradio.com and knyn Trust, hard work, and experience is what you'll find at Brian's Muffler Shop in Evanston. Quality work at a great price, Brian's Muffler is the perfect fit for oil changes, stock and performance mufflers, and Anderson hitches and accessories. Call Brian's Muffler today, 789-7021. Get a degree or certification. Earn your high school GED. Get job skills. Become CPR certified. Or use our free 3D printers and tools. These are just a few of the opportunities available at Uinta BOCES number one. Call 307-789-5742 to learn more. Distracted driving is dangerous, but some people just can't seem to help themselves. There's the steering wheel proper, the sneak a peeker, 
the fast roller, the night lighter. And it's not long until they become the thunderbenderer, the got a ticketer, the veering off the road, the driver who kills someone. Enough with the phones already. Just put them down. Precision, the quality, condition, or fact of being exact and accurate. Precision is important. Scoring the next point, making the perfect shot, getting the best score. And when you think of your dentist, you want precision to be the first word that comes to mind. That's why patients are so pleased with Dr. McKay Frankham. He provides precision family dentistry at reasonable prices to every patient. Dr. McKay Frankham, call today for an appointment. Call Dr. McKay Frankham at 789-8910. State bound Evanston Red Devils after tonight's victory over the Green River Wolves, 44 to 20. It's time for our Dr. McKay Frankham Precision Play of the Game, brought to you by Dr. McKay Frankham Precision Dentistry for the whole family. Call 307 789 8910 for your appointment today. And joined by Luke Robinette. And Luke, we could go with a whole batch of plays. Of course, there was the hard runs by Brady Roberts, the Cole Robinette touchdown, but I think we got to go with Drew Barker's 27-yard touchdown reception to make it 21 to nothing because that was kind of something where that Evanston did that, and you knew that they were firing on all cylinders when they were able to get out to a 21 nothing lead. Yeah, no, that was the staple, you know, 21-0, and that really kind of just, I think really just that's when you could really start to feel Green River kind of like start to be like, oh my goodness, you know, we're in for a long game, and the Red Devils really got uh, high on some confidence there. And that was super big for us. You know, it's always fun to see, you know, Cohen Morrow connect to Drew Barker and just to anyone, really. It's fun to see the Red Devils put the ball in the air, and that was definitely a, a fun play to watch for sure. These young men have worked for not just this year, but when it comes to the seniors, you're talking about guys who started when they were as young as sophomores and freshmen. They have worked for years to get to this opportunity, and now, finally, 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 the Evanston Red Devils will have a chance to show the state what they are made of and go out there and compete for a state championship. It's a long ways to go, but you know what? You're in the dance and that's that's all that's the first goal and that's all you gotta do. Yeah, no, and just like what you said, I I loved how like, you know, they have been working hard since like sophomore year. And that's what I love about what Coach Moore is always telling uh, the guys, you know, it's time, you know, and it's their time. You know, they've paid their dues, they they've worked really hard and they've came together as a unit and just found a way to, to get wins and, you know, now to qualify for the playoffs. You definitely go in on that bus, and you're, and you're celebrating for sure, absolutely. You know, ending that five-year streak is, is super big, and that's something that, you know, Evanston's going to hold on to, and hopefully we can, you know, start a new streak and, you know, um, just get to the playoffs and make it a consistent, you know, a, cons a consistent thing. But, you know, it's just super great to see. But, you know, the job's not finished, and this team is ha has a lot of potential. And, you know, just hopefully go into that first round and get another win. Don Cogger taking a picture that will no doubt – be a memory of a lifetime for each of these young men and these Red Devil fans. They are headed to the playoffs, and they will play the East number one seed in a few uh, few days' time, just over a week on Fri on uh, next Friday, a week from tomorrow. That's your Dr. McKay Franco Precision Play of the Game, brought to you by Dr. McKay Franco Precision Dentistry for the whole family. Call 307-789-8910 for your appointment today. We'll be right back after this. You're tuned in to a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Football. Live on MyLocalRadio.com and KNYN. Red Devil Pride runs deep with the team at Callis Automotive. Today's students are tomorrow's leaders. You'll always find quality products at fair prices at Callis Automotive. We're proud to serve our customers, our community, and our Evanston Red Devils. Stop in today. Callis Automotive, your local Napa dealer. With over 45 years of experience, Dr. Casey Davis at Davis Chiropractic can provide you with a whole range of services, including spinal adjustment, cold laser treatments, platform vibration therapy, and more. Davis Chiropractic is open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. At Evanston Walmart, you'll find all the tools students need to succeed. Our team is committed to providing quality products and an excellent shopping experience. Stop in today. 125 North 2nd Street, Evanston. Walmart. Save money. Live better. Here at our clean energy facility in Evanston, we take great pride in fabricating and manufacturing equipment to make the carbon-free transportation mission possible. 
The diversity of the operation leads to a need for a variety of skill sets at the facility here in Evanston. We perform TIG welding, MIG welding, small pipe and tube bending, laser cutting, control panel fabrication, assembly of pressure containing equipment, and valve repairs. Natural gas fueled vehicles make business sense. Clean Energy, 1600 Union Drive, Evanston. Western Wyoming Beverages has been proudly owned and operated in Wyoming for over 50 years, providing reliable service, friendly staff, and the nation's top beverage products, including Pepsi. We always strive to be the premier business partner for our customers. Western Wyoming Beverages services Rock Springs, Green River, Jackson, Evanston, Kemmer, Pinedale, Wamsetter, Big Piney, Mountain View, and Lyman. Go Red Devils! And we welcome you back to the Les Schwab Plain Styers broadcast booth. It's time for our Pepsi Player of the Game, brought to you by Pepsi. That's what I like. And it, and that is uh, also brought to you by Western Wyoming Beverages. And how can we not go with Brady Roberts? He was absolutely dynamic today with uh, two touchdowns tonight and helping the Red Devils to a 44-20 victory. So he's our Pepsi player of the game. Joining us now, though, we have one of the highlight players, not just tonight, but all season. It's Evanston senior Kai Barker. And, uh, Kai, um, you've been on this team and part of this group since you were, I think, a, a sophomore. It was the year you had that interception against Ben Lohman to really kind of put yourself on the map for Evanston football. Being on all those teams, taking all of those journeys, all the bus rides, and finally in your senior year to get a chance to play in the playoffs, what does that mean to you? Uh, it means a lot because we've been always had this vision since middle school that we're going to go to playoffs, make state our senior year, and that we were going to make a change because it was that year in eighth grade is what like last year we went to playoffs. So we go, let's make a change, and this has always been our dream to make it here. And having this chance is really great. As I mentioned before, we got on the air. Mission one is accomplished. Mission two is just starting. Uh, how are you guys – you guys are obviously going to enjoy this win. This is a huge win for you guys. But how are you guys uh, hoping to kind of stay locked in to be ready to play a week from tomorrow? I think we're just going to uh, game by game, don't get too far ahead of ourselves, but realize what the end goal is. But we got to go one game at a time, one play at a time. And the next play is the most important. That's what I hope the guys realize. I couldn't help but notice you guys are, are huddling around, getting a picture. Don Cogger down there from the Uinta County Herald is taking the picture. And it is a moment you guys are going to to remember and cherish for the rest of your lives that when you get that picture, has it hit you yet that this was a big goal, not just for this year, but for years now for Evanston to get back to the playoffs? Has it hit you yet that you guys have accomplished it? Uh, yes and no. It's great to be going, but I haven't had that gut-wrenching feeling <laughs> of, oh, man, we really did it. Because I think this has been the expectation all year. And now we got to accomplish the goal of making it to state and winning that thing in War Memorial. Talk to me a little bit about what it was just kind of like to play at Green River, but it felt like a neutral game. Evanston fans were loud. Green River fans were loud. Evanston Classics, Evanston Cheer was here. It felt like a neutral type playoff game. Talk to me what it was like to be in Green River, but almost feel like we're back at K Fackerel. Uh, it was really cool because I remember at the beginning of the year, uh, we were talking to our football coaches and the student body president about bringing a bus to bring students to be able to support us because we knew this would be a big game for everybody. And it was just really awesome to be able to see all the red and then all the green battling it out on and off the field, which was really fun and funny to watch. That is, yeah, that was really funny hearing the shouting, uh, the go big red, go big green, kind of going back and forth. It was, it added a whole new atmosphere tonight. That is uh, Kai Barker, senior with the Evanston football team. May I mention the state bound Evanston football team in 2023. Kai, congratulations. Great game tonight. Anything else before we wrap it up? Uh, go big red. <laughs> nice job. All right, we're going to go ahead and bring in probably a man who is somewhere between elated and relieved that the job is done. It is Evanston coach Steve Moore. And uh, Coach Moore, now that we got you in here in the Les Schwab Plains Tower broadcast booth, um, mission one accomplished. It, 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 was, it was one that I think Evanston Red Devil football fans have been craving for a long time, but we're back to playing meaningful football in the end of October. Yeah, it feels great. Uh, kudos to the kids for, you know, this week was not the ideal week. In terms of preparation with Monday and Tuesday off of school, we did practice Tuesday night. but And then the two uh, lower-level games last night, which we played very well, by the way. Um, and then today they had the ACT. A lot of All the juniors and a lot of the seniors had the ACT this morning. So 
just a crazy week, but the kids <laughs> responded, and I'm, I'm so proud of them. You look at how everything kind of played out throughout the season, of course. You start off with the game against Ben Lohman, and you mentioned it earlier in the pregame show. You guys got better and better and better every single game. And as Kai said, I think there was an expectation that this is the group, this is the year, and this is the time that we turn this thing around. But saying it and having that expectation and doing it and executing it is two completely different things. Right, yeah. And we have. We, we feel like as a, as a staff, our team has progressed every week. Yeah, we had some hiccups, which you always do. Um, but we, we re regrouped. And, you know, we got kids that know the game of football out there, and that, that sure helps. Coach Wagstaff just said it in our huddle out there. He, sometimes he gets the calls in late on defense. But these kids have played a lot of football, and they're, they understand the game. They understand, you know, it's just, it's just so rewarding to see them just play the game, and that's, I felt like that's what we did tonight. We just kind of played the game of football and, and took care of business. At what moment did it kind of hit you that, hey, it, it's, this part's done, we're, we're, we're going to be playing? Yeah. <laughs> when they caught that long pass, <laughs> that kind of got me a little nervous again. But uh, end of the third quarter, we were feeling pretty comfortable with, with what we were doing, what we had. Um, but, yeah, it's, until that clock re reads zeros, you, you don't, you're not real comfortable. I was going to ask, what was the first thought that went through your head when it did reach zeros? You know, just so proud of the kids. I'm happy for them. It's been, what, five years since we've been in the playoffs. So um, we're a hungry team. We are a hungry team. Uh, I'm going to give the kids tomorrow night off. Um, and then co we're going to meet as coaches. We're going to come up with the game plan once we figure out where we're headed, which will be in about 24 hours, I guess. Uh, and then we're back at it Monday, and we'll break down film and, and get a game plan together. And I'm just so happy for the kids. I'm happy for the community. Uh, support tonight was unbelievable. I want to throw a shout-out, thanks to the administration and our community for the support. It seemed like we, it was pretty even fan yeah. basis out there you know we we're making plays you could definitely hear them and just a lot of good things i'm just really happy i know there's the 24 hour rule to celebrate big wins but <laughs> i would imagine this one might feel a little bit more like 36 yeah. not quite 48 you know, but I, I do hope the kids <laughs> i enjoy it relax a little bit yeah. um and then just go let it fly and i i really think we can make some noise um but we're gonna have to play good football which i i I think we do most of the time. So it's going to be exciting. Um, but, again, I'm just happy for the kids. That's Coach Steve Moore, head coach for the state-bound Evanston Red Devils. Coach, thank you so much for the time. Anything else for we wrap it up? No, just, again, thank you for all you do. I know there's a lot of people at home watching. Uh, no, just excited. Go Big Red. Let's get after it. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. Coach, thank you so much for the time. Yep. And that's going to do it for our broadcast here at Green River High School. Your final score, it's Evanston 44, Green River 20. A big thank you to our producer back at the studio in downtown Evanston, Mr. Colton Backley. Our executive producer, Val Cook. Our webmaster is Sean Hando. Uh, Val Cook, also our owner, who we could not do this without his support. Our sales manager, Matt Petrie. Our sales associates, Julie Burley and Sarah Pay. And our office manager, Kayleen Anderson. On behalf of the rest of the staff at My Local Radio Sports, we have Voice of the Valley, Anthony Colasuno, Voice of the Rich Rebels in Utah, Mr. Aaron Poling, Voice of the Preston Indians in Idaho, Mr. Dan Hubbard, Voice of the Jackson Bronx, Mr. Jake Nichols, and Voice of the Westside Pirates in Idaho, Mr. Cody Olson. My name's Elon Olaf, and it's been my pleasure to be with you tonight. Join me on Saturday, next time the ball flies, when we have Evanston Red Devil Volleyball live from Jackson. Pre-game show brought to you by Kazine's Ace and Furniture at 12.30, first serve at 1 o'clock. Thank you guys so much. Have a great night, and take care. The proceeding has been a wholly owned production of MyLocalRadio.com and Cook Brothers Broadcasting, LLC. No portion of which may be used or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Cook Brothers Broadcasting, LLC. Thank you for joining us for this sports presentation on MyLocalRadio.com.